Hölle, Hölle. Hölle. Hi guys, I hope the audio is coming fine. Let me know in the comment section and refresh once uh, so that the live stream actually starts. Um, hope you all have been great, healthy and all your fam family members have been happy and healthy and have enjoyed your uh, holidays to a great extent. And uh, as usual, I apologize for not coming live for so many days and I have missed it as usual. And of course, this time I, <laughs> I had kind of some justified reasons that it was the Durga Puja is going on. And I thought that I'll go on with my live streams even during the Durga Pujas. But uh, as Bengalis will know, it just does not happen <laughs> in the end. There are no plans. Everything is random. Uh, th this friend cancels. That friend shows up. It's all random. Everything is random. Your sleep cycle is random. Your plans are random. So live streams could not be done uh, during Durga Pujas. So let's see who all are online. Uh, linguist. I would recommend you reading Al Biruni's uh, on Hindu tradition and sciences. Uh, Azerbaijan tak Buddhism phaila tha. Ye Al Biruni ne likha hai. Wow, I had no idea. Interesting. Jai Shri Ram. Jai Shri Ram. Namo Namaha. Namo Namaha. Nowadays I am getting YouTube comment banned <laughs> every now and then. Dada, cause it hurts them with burnout. I see. But are you sure it your comment is actually getting banned because YouTube has one uh, weird policy that you have to click on your uh, newest comments to actually see your comment. Otherwise, if it uh, usually every YouTuber keeps it on uh, the top comment setting and half the comments get disappeared. So if you uh, for, for no reason, they just disappear. OK, even if you scroll through everything, if it's uh, marked as top comment, if it's the settings uh, setting is on marked com comments, your uh, some of your comments will just disappear. But uh, most of uh, the times, if you uh, click on newest comments, your comments will be visible again. Let Jihad Korbe na, I have to let Jihad hoye chahi. Your volume is low. Wait, let's see what can be done. Hmm. Hello, hello. I changed some mic positions, maybe that's why. And I'm not shouting as a fiat. I, uh, later on, I might get excited and shout and speak loudly. That's why I've kept the volume a little low. Hello, hello. And, uh, um, NCRT is changing, yes, and they are keep uh, uh, going to call our country Bharat from now on. Vijay Dashami ki Hardik. Vijay Dashami ki Hardik. Shubkam Nay. Yes, same to you, Ninar. Yes, even from newest comment. Oh, acha. Then, <laughs> then you are doing great work. Shubha Vijaya to everyone. Yes, Shubha Vijaya Ram Shangramjit. Uh, so that's what I was thinking that m b most Bengalis won't probably join today because they are probably out uh, celebrating in their uh, dancing in their local pujas visarjan. Uh, because and uh, because uh, for some reason uh, a lot of pujas don't have their visarjans on dashami and some are going to the carnival tomorrow which is uh, uh, the, the the enforced um, sanitized uh, visarjan that's going to happen under the state government's uh, uh, lookout the recent book i read is my jihad in german dashiraki hardik shubkam yes um and let me first show you guys the books I bought from the communist bookstall, okay? Uh, in the in one place I usually go to every year from my childhood because it's all my people I've known from childhood. Uh, those people sit on the uh, in that communist bookstall, so every year I buy something or the other for for the entirety of my lifetime I've bought some books or the other. But this time I I made a serious book haul because usually I buy one or two commie books. Last year I bought a book on uh, Bengali book on Shivaji written by a Kami, Chhatrapati uh, Shivaji Maharaj. And uh, this time I actually found some significant books for a change. So I bought those as well. And I usually don't like to mention and uh, basically tell anyone about my book hauls. Uh, and it's not really a uh, comment on anyone who posts photos of their book hauls. But I know personally people who post photos of their book hauls and then disappear from social media for two, three months, read all of them and come back. But uh, I feel some uh, a bit uncomfortable uh, telling people about my book hauls because I feel like it's sort of an arrogant show off or something. I only mention the book uh, I'm, I have just completed reading and I only post pictures of those books. But this is the first time I will tell uh, talk about books that I have bought and have not finished reading yet because it's uh, fun to see what books I bought from uh, the communist book stalls. Uh, I am the only person in the world who buys valuable books in even in and finds valuable books even in communist book stalls. So, uh, book stall er kotha bolchi. 
uh, afin kothay jadavpur no somewhere else okay first is for non bengalis this is the entire bomke shomogro uh, all the stories about the bengali detective fictional de- detective called uh, bomkesh the the sanskrit is obviously vyoma kesha it's lord shiva's name uh, but uh, some of you all must have seen the movie where uh, sushant singh rajput played the uh, role of the detective bomkesh they were pronouncing it as bomkesh bomkesh that's a bit weird in bengali we just pronounce it as as uh, bomkesh so i have read every th- all tenida kaka babu feluda all of those uh, each and every of those stories uh, and cornell as well by said mustafa siraz i didn't like ghonada as much but i have not read actually any bomkesh i have seen most of the movies uh, and i have read i have read one bomkesh story when i was very young i think something had that one had something to do with uh, gold biscuits this is the first time i'm going to read bomkesh properly okay next okay now where do i keep these Dada Pujo Kamon Gal. Yes, that's also what something I wanted to discuss. How was all of your holidays? What did you all do? And did you all encounter some comi arguments even in the holidays? You all must have some comi friends whom you all met. And what did you all discuss? Did your debates get heated up? Uh, my debates did get heated up. I had some fascinating debates. And uh, some questions got stuck in my mind from the debates I had with my comi relatives. And uh, a lot of them were answered the very next day uh, the day after coincidentally from some books i bought from the communist book stall okay so uh, interesting things are happening and i don't usually talk about my mu- music career uh, on on this channel but um, some great things have been happening on the career front as well uh, me and my team of basically our it's a it's a gr- we are a group of four uh, friends from high school okay three of us are friends and one of us uh is basically a 3 year senior but he was also in our school and he had been a star voice of india finalist z bangla saregama pa uh, winner as well so uh, now b- 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 two from our group of four musicians that we work together two of them are the composers two brothers and uh, i arrange most I mainly i arrange sometimes i mix some songs and the other person the other friend in our that four person group uh, sometimes mixes uh sometimes does some drum programming he's ma- mainly a drummer so one song that we uh, made for this durga puja uh, is probably the most popular bengali durga puja song for this year and it's been pretty viral so far we have 125000 reels on instagram made on that song and uh, 2.5 million views on youtube so that's that's pretty nice okay this is this is of course i did not get from uh, the communist book stall <laughs> this is uh, arthur avlon's shakti and shakta so this we will discuss today after we are done talking to each other uh, but let's first i'll just show you the some other books are also getting delivered on amazon i i have ordered count uh, i think 5 6 books uh, but i'm not going to count them I'm, we are just going to i'm just going to show the books i specifically bought from the communist book stall okay okay this is probably the most significant book that i bought from this this time the, this uh, communist book stall this is a book by amartya sen okay so um i have always been thinking that okay i'm criticizing these people abhijit banerjee amartya sen so much i probably <laughs> should read something at least directly from their mouth right so at least primary re- research primary source kuch to padhte hain unke muh se i'm i'm criticizing them just based on the fact that they have such comi views they think that uh, bjp has come to power so democracy has ended and amartya sen is now pretty much a um a c- clear cut trinamool supporter uh so uh, but i have not read anything but by, by him that's i think is kind of intellectually dishonest so i bought this book but there were actually many bengali uh, amartyasen books there none of them written in bengali all of them were written in english but i decided that i really want to read it in bengali only because i'm going to start some bengali live streams as well from this channel only because i want people to unite here i don't want a separate bengali channel where only some bengali pride people will also come i want all of all of india to be in my channel now my bengali uh, vocabulary has to uh, improve to a large extent for that so i decided i'll read amartya sen's uh, books translated in bengali some by by some other uh, person uh, because i'm from an english medium school so my bengali vocabulary is not not really top notch now uh, the book i bought is called porichiti o hingsha okay so i thought what's supposed to be the translation for this is it identity and violence 
so is he go- going to talk about identity politics so i skimmed through some pages and i thought i saw yes this book is about identity so uh, my head immediately just got blown away that what amartya sen is against identity politics what is going on here and then i came home and read about uh, how many pages uh, that's 25 pages i've already read okay in one sitting and as we have discussed in some previous live streams that for indian languages there is so many there are so many conjoined words right jisko yuktakshar kehte hain bengali mein yuktakshar bolte hain to uh, so that takes up really small amounts of space for saying something very long which would take lots more words and pages in an english book so 25 pages for a, a bengali book is about uh, 50 pages for an english book so uh, i i i am absolutely blown away and very very surprised that this book seems like r- to be written by kushal mehra okay every criticism of identity politics made made by kushal mehra for which he disagrees even with decoloniality with the fear that decoloniality will immediately lead to some sort of uh, fascist hindu society which will take us back to the vedic ages in such a way that we will even uh, stop studying science we will only drive horse carts and and uh, 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 bullock carts on the roads and we will all uh, go back to wearing the clothes that we wore 2000 years back we will stop reading uh, english we will only uh, the entire country will be only learning uh, their mother tongue and sanskrit and we are we are basically going to become a hindu pakistan that's the fear with decoloniality that's word for word what's written in amartya sen's book so and i get that as a as a uh, from a libertarian perspective or even from kushal mehra's perspective that okay you you should have that fear uh, but Uh, and and Amartya Sen obviously i- this book is written in 2006 so he is basically hinting that uh, these problems if if uh, they they are not checked they will come to india and the hindus will take it up as well so identity politics must be prevented at all costs but this man's words does not match um, his his actions don't match anything he has written in this book okay he is a vehement trinamool supporter he he is an ardent trinamool supporter he is vehemently anti bjp but he does not see that trinamool congress is is the mother load of identity politics in west bengal i don't know how that works he is a i had no idea that he was a vehement i anti identity politics guy i thought he would be a pro social justice a pro lgbtq pro woke uh, sort of politics guy but there are some interesting things i have discovered anyway uh, let me sh- uh, let me show you uh, some some interesting things uh, one or two are that uh, he says that Uh, identity is bad some some group identity where where how much are you going going to take that argument to its logical conclusion um that uh, uh, you are part of that group this group and he 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 makes this point about five times okay that's that's the one thing uh, he says repeatedly which shows that he has some ax to grind and he uh, sort of has a chip on his shoulder otherwise he is as precise a writer as sitaram goel at the moment i'm 32 years old the two most precise writers i have read in my life is sitaram goel and amartya sen okay one or two line you miss or or uh, you lose your focus a bit you'll miss the entire topic okay uh, amartya sen does not like write like sri aurobindo or j sai deepak that they explain the thing elaborately repeatedly no 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 it's every sentence is extremely important and very juicy okay stimulating very stimulating every sentence makes you think that person repeatedly says one thing that see if you try to put uh, a person like me me meaning amartya sen in in a box in a in a group identity based scenario what are you going to put put me in i am a bengali i am a non brahmin i am an economist i am a one of a philosopher so which group should i identify with and which groups politics should i follow okay that's the argument he makes five or six times for some weird reason but then he also says i am a feminist and i am pro uh gay rights and etc uh, and i am pro abortion rights but how are you against identity politics so vehemently that you have written a beautiful stimulating book against identity politics but you are pro feminism i don't know how that works and one other thing i learned is that i'll discuss it in my bengali live stream as well i i think i'll do a chapter by chapter critique 
बाई क्रिटिक आई मीन एनालिस नॉट नॉट जस्ट क्रिटिसिजम दैट क्या भोजी वाले क्या लिखा है बट ही हैज एब्सोल्यूटली नो नॉलेज ऑफ इस्लाम ओके दैट समथिंग फैसिनेटिंग बिकॉज ही एक्नोलेज दैट देर आर इंस्टेंसेज ऑफ वायलेंस इन इस्लाम और बाई इस्लामिक किंग्स औरंगजेब वॉज अ वायलेंट मैन बट इन जनरल हिज नॉलेज ऑफ इस्लामिक टेक्स्ट और वट एवर इज रिटर्न इन इस्लाम दैट इज आईदर एब्सोल्यूटली जीरो और ही हैज रेड फ्रॉम सम वेरी नाइस सैनिटाइज ब्यूटिफुल कुरान लाइक द वन आई हैव बेस्ड ऑन विच पीपल से दैट इट्स द रिलीजन ऑफ पीस दैट द रियल जिहाद इज इन साइड यू यू शुड किल द मॉन्स्टर इन साइड यू दो सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग्स ही बिलीव ओके लेट मी टेल यू वट हीज रिटर्न अबाउट इस्लाम Oh, and I have found some uh, uh, justifications for the concept of Hindutva as well from his writings. Uh, let's see if I can discuss that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so here he quotes something from Jean Paul uh, Sartre, uh, which seems like a quote <laughs> uh, from from Savarkar as well. Okay. Sartre says about the Jews that. Uh, um uh, jews have never said that they are jewish really uh, uh his jewish identity is because of the people who hate them and call them jewish okay the 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 anti jew person i'm i'm basically translating re- in real time from bengali okay the anti jew person is the one who is basically giving the identity to jews okay so like savarkar had said that i am hindu because you are muslim otherwise i am a universal human okay Mm, let's see. I've under underlined many fun things which we will discuss only in the Bengali live stream. Uh, focus on. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen to this, guys. On on Islam, okay. He says that uh, one Muslim might have a really very confrontational attitude, and another Muslim might accept many viewpoints and opinions. but because of that uh, just because there are two people like that that doesn't stop them from being a muslim what's this supposed to mean a person who is accepting of different viewpoints okay or is accepting of different cultures or the opinions coming from different cultures that person is not really a muslim that person is a liberal or atheist muslim but amartya sen does not know that so you see even though i don't really have any interest of knowing the real quran or real islam anymore because i kind of know that okay it is what it is i am more interested in how to have a conversation or or debate with people okay and if if a muslim really knows the uh, real quran you will never win a debate with them because the only question you are going to ask them is that do you think i should be killed do you think i should be killed he'll say yes in a sharia state you should be killed <laughs> what's it to debate so i want to talk uh, talk to or or have a debate with people who think that these things are not written in quran so what's the basis uh, uh, on on what other things then we can talk about that's why i don't uh, read about uh, the 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 violence described in islam too much anymore anymore but this shows that even people like amartya are so ill informed on on islam so thank god there are still channels like sanjay dikshit who are still educating people on these things okay here's another interesting thing he writes on islam so he write, writes about akbar that akbar was a very <laughs> liberal king uh, who was incidentally called uh, the the gazi of chitor but that, that that's not what he mentions here of course so he says islam did not tell akbar to be liberal okay and then he says aurangzeb was very violent he he really tortured and was extremely violent and did genocides of uh, of non muslims but listen to this line he says akbar did not become less of a muslim because he became liberal nor did uh, aurangzeb beca- become less of a muslim because he committed violence against non muslims so you see how many things are wrong in that one sentence that's interesting uh what other funny thing did i find yes see a justification for hindutva he says that uh, uh i admit that uh, uh, multi his focus is on multi dimensional identity not one dimensional identity that you are just a hindu or you are just gay that sh- that should not be the outlook uh, of a of a person uh, uh, looking at another person 
that's of course a fair argument according to me but he says that in certain situations okay in some ca- cases uh, a, a person might have to prior <laughs> prioritize one identity over the other and that according to me is a justification for hindutva okay let's see what other justification of hindutva i found uh, yeah listen to this he has brought out a, a quote from marx where marx criticizes marxists this was also an interest interesting uh, discovery this is from a, uh, a book written by karl marx in 1875 25 years after uh, the release of his uh, book called communist manifesto this is from the book called critique of the gotha program okay so he says uh, wait the actual english quote is in the appendix but i'll read from there only so you all will understand better hold on yeah so marx is saying unequal individuals and they would not be different individuals if they were not unequal so unequal individuals are measurable only by an equal standard in so far as they are brought under an equal point of view are taken from one definite side only for example in the present case they are regarded only as workers okay so he's talking about the workers party of of germany in the in that situation in, in 1875 and all of whom whom are basically marxists but he's criticizing them for looking at those workers as just workers and nothing else and that's what amartya sen finds very fascinating of course that uh, yes marx is criticizing those uh, people for uh, for having a one one dimensional uh, view of the identity of those workers but those workers might be many other things they they are germans they may be atheists they may not be atheists they may be from different uh, areas of germany etc so wait what's the hindutva justification i found yeah so uh, it was basically the same thing that uh, in in certain situations we will have to prioritize one identity over the other okay so two t- twice he says this and twice i get a justification for hindutva from amartya sen okay then we will get into th- the three other books i have brought mm, bought from uh, the communist book stall let me see some comments before that hmm. okay no i'll check the comments after this because we will discuss how you all puja how uh, the puja of you all people you people went i'm forgetting in, in in english and or i'm coming live after so long that i'm fumbling so much and we will discuss what debates you all had and then i'll tell you what debates i had so this book is uh, the second part of the legendary book by will durant called the story of philosophy okay so it's a very short just uh, so short very brief history of uh, western philosophy and the english version is just one volume but in bengali they have uh, brought out in two volumes and by mistake i bought the second volume i did not notice that it's the second volume uh, when i went home and uh, started reading it i found that okay it's the second volume and then i called them up and asked them if they have the first volume they did not have it but it's it's uh, not a big problem because it's not like i uh, missed some uh, it's not like i missed a first hard half of a movie okay so the first part of the, uh, the of the hist- uh, story of philosophy is basically the all the greek philosophers etc this this version this uh, edition or the second part starts with kant and then moves forward so that's whom i'm going to learn about from this uh, this book this is also a bengali bengali translation so that my bengali vocabulary increases and i learn all the political science and sociology uh, and philosophical terms in bengali as well that will be a great weapon to have okay then is probably uh, 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 the second most significant book i bought this is uh nrishingho prasad bhaduri is a famous bengali historian he is not a kami historian but he is sort of a congress uh, b- congress historian okay so basically you could uh, if i if i if i was being sarcastic and being unnecessarily <laughs> disrespectful i would call all these historians kami historians but that's the, the general liberal uh, mainstream uh, history that used to be followed by congressy people uh commie people had even further weird histories back then okay uh, but this is the old school indian liberals version of uh, indian history and mythology now interestingly this book is dedicated to mamta banerji 
he is a very respected very senior person nishingo prasad bhaduri his youtube channel is very popular some of my own viewers have recommended me that i watch nishingo prasad bhaduri's uh, channel but i did not watch because those are 10 15 minute books uh, videos what am i going to learn in depth from those videos and he believes in aryan invasion theory pretty much and is and he uh, makes those points that bengalis were so uh, bengal region was so looked down upon in ancient uh, hindu scriptures so those because of those things i did not find any interest in viewing his work but this book is called ramayoni this is a nice uh, thick book and beautiful artwork but this is not a ramayan translation this is a co- his commentary on ramayan and uh, every chapter is about one specific character so his interpretation that what were they supposed to be how they were meant to be read and how uh, the current indian right wing has basically misappropriated or misunderstood those characters okay so on the one hand the kami uh, historians will say that ramayan is extremely bad it's casteist it's against women etc this person is saying ramayan is beautiful that's the difference between liberal history and kami history okay the the fake liberal yeah congress liberal history and kami history so he is saying that my prabhu shri ram was such a great man the ramayan is such a beautiful text these stupid uh, bjp people no, he doesn't mention by name of course but anyone who's using the word uh, phrase jai shri ram and and using it to uh, uh, aggressively talk down to someone they are the one who are uh, ones who are misunderstanding and misappropriating my, the my beautiful ramayan and my beautiful lord ram that's an interesting perspective so i have read a bit of the introduction and uh, this begins with a dedication to mamta banerji i thought it was sarcasm but when i read the preface I, i'm in the middle of the preface then i realize that okay this guy is serious <laughs> he is actually uh, pretty then uh, pro pro mamta banerji and is very much anti hindutva interesting uh, so uh, in the in the dedication part he says that uh, uh, a a person who would not have loved uh, decoits saying i'm translating in real time okay decoits saying joy makali and going around looting people if a person dislikes uh, such a person such a decoit that same person would, would therefore also dislike a person who says jai shri ram and then goes ahead to uh, to also loot someone else and for that reason uh, i dedicate this book to mamta banerji okay this book is a is an interesting one i don't know if it's uh, a marxist uh, telling of this history because i have not researched that much about this person this is also a bengali translation of a of a of a 1965 english book okay it's it was written by a scholar called charuchandra shannal uh, this is uh, this has been translated by someone else uh, so this is a pretty th- again thick rich book beautifully illustrated this is about the history of the rajbongshi tribe okay now they are today called uh, tribal people or or janjati etc but of, of course their name is rajbongshi okay they are literally from from the uh, from families of kings so i guess they went to uh, live in the forest and and quit the binary of nagara and grama um, co- consensually and then started living in the forest for some reason i don't know uh, i'm prob- i'm basically guessing here why else would their uh, uh, name be rajbongshi but this is uh, i think these people uh, have lived in the jalpaiguri or kuchbihar region as far as i know up till now because i haven't uh, started reading this book as of yet so these are the books that i bought from the communist book stall okay yes that's <laughs> dedicated to mamta manerji ei to jibon okay now let's listen to the comments I saw many Hindu Mahasabha bookstores in Behala. Oh my God! Uh, yeah, v- uh, Hindu Mahasabha <laughs> books. Uh, VHP does book uh, put up a book stall in some Durga Pujas. Do you think BJP intensifying their work in Bengal now? Yeah, definitely. Um, hi everyone, Shubhu Bijaya Dasami, Dada Pujo Kaman Galo. Hey, here come Galo. Yeah, I said. Buddhism itself was vocalist to a great extent. Yeah, Shaolin has greater influence over the dharmic part of Buddhism than Buddha. As per Sanatan Samiksha, Buddha wasn't a great guy. Oh. कत निल प्राइसगुल एंड कत कत पेज आ मोटा बोलो बोगुलो डिटेल्स दिल पुरो दाओ डिटेल्स अच्छा दिस बुक दैट स्टोरी अफ फिलोजफी सेकेंड पार्ट इज प्रिटी थिन हाउ हाउ मच लंग उल इट बी अबाउट टू हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी टू पेजेस दिस कस्ट 
this costs two uh, fifty rupees. I got a total discount of three hundred rupees because they don't give much discount because uh, they need to uh, have some money for for setting up that establishment, that bookstall itself. Uh, so usually I don't ask them for any discount because it's like buying books from people I've known all my life, and I'm buying only one or two books. But this time I bought so many books, so I said that why don't you all give any discount? Uh, we need discounts now. And the Amrita Sen book is about. Uh, okay, so it's two. Uh, it's a very short book. One hundred and. Amrita Sen book is one hundred and ninety-three pages. This is from Anand Publisher. That's the biggest publishing house in Bengal. This costs. Uh, can't find where it's written. Oh yeah, three hundred rupees. Shakti and Shakta. It costs about six hundred rupees. Okay, the Bomke Shomogro costs uh, fourteen hundred rupees. This is gigantic. Okay, the history of the Rajbangshis. That one costs. This is also pretty thick, five hundred rupees just. There will be plenty of citations and a gigantic appendix, of course, because this is a pretty basically an academic scholarly work. Okay, so this is four hundred and fifty-six pages, and the uh, Ramayani uh, by Nishinga Prasad Bhaduri is twelve hundred rupees. So that's about four thousand rupees worth of books, and I got a discount of three hundred rupees. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Sanatan Samiksha also cherry picks. I would recommend primary sources would be more useful. Yeah. Uh, what Ch Sanatan Sh Samiksha had pointed out uh, about the casteism in Buddhism that coincidentally before hearing about that channel, that's the same day I also <laughs> did a live stream on uh, on casteism in, on in Buddhism, and we found some pretty horrid things. Also, the Gautama Buddha's core book uh, Chudamani has become extinct, like he himself wrote that as per Albert Uni. I see. Congratulations, Adi. Yes, thank you. Cherry picking is needed to make them uh, taste their medicine. Exactly, exactly. Cherry picking is what they have done to us as well. So I'm not against it. However, Shaolin does have greater influence on the dharmic part you get in Zen and Korean Buddhism. Which song? Nam bolo. I lo uma barite. Arey amar to kaku. Hello, your computer has virus. Uh, why? Why do you think so? Shit. Where is the virus? Uh. Amartya Sen is still uh, an, an old school kami with age old argument. He ain't no libertarian. Yeah, but I was saying libertarian in the sense that uh, libertarians believe in the same things uh, in when it comes to identity. They are also very much against identity politics, right? Uh, Kushal and I am just decolonization from the context of Latin America and Africa. Yes, I don't get that. Decoloniality means we will become Africa. That argument never ends. It's Douglas Murray. Kushal Mehra, Abhijit Ayer Mitra, some commie uh, professors I know, PhDs I know, so everyone says that decoloniality means going back to slavery of Africa. Are that's decoloniality of Africa maybe, not for us. Africa was never a prosperous uh, society. Unka Afrofuturism hai, hotep, sab sab uh, imagination mein bana ke rakha hai. But Africa was never, never, never in history a prosperous society. And it's not. No, I'm not making a racist uh, comment. It's it's not the fault of their race. Thomas Sowell speaks of it openly that it, it's not it's not basically because of their race it's because of their geography that land is goddamn inaccessible except without modern vehicles etc so trade has always been a near impossibility in that continent and for that they have forever been poor and impoverished and uh, and a dehumanized destroyed society so uh, what what they are going to decolonize is not going to be the same as our decolonization Hmm. Fata fati gacha. I wore dhoti for the first time in life. I see. Did dance in Bhashan with loud <laughs> shouting of Bolo Madurga, Mikey. Uh, from me, did enjoy with family and of course had debates. Nice. Ah, so this argument is not valid as you see changes in sciences like Varaha Mehra's and Aryabhatta's time shows improvement in sciences. So if we follow uh, pro decolonial, we will have more sciences. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, and also read Alberuni's book on Indian sciences. It will make better sense. I see. Arey Dada, by identity politics, he referred to Hindu. He doesn't utter a word about other communities. Yes. Uh, 
Also had a few interesting debates once where I had almost a public spat with an old uncle and he is the designated person with inferiority complex. My debate is also with an old uncle. I'll, I'll tell you all about it now. Shubha Vijaya Dada, Shubha Vijaya. And your family, thank you. Your family. Uh, yes, of course, Dhoti is very comfortable. Read Alberuni, his description of why it was invaded, uh, the peaceful jihad. Ha. Yeah, yeah. He should re read Islam uh, that Amartya Sen. Sanitized Quran is for non-Muslims, whereas real Quran is for Muslims. Yeah, that was the thing that was discovered by Ar Arun Shori. Uh, what a way to further their propaganda, the Mola. <laughs> These people use anti identity view only for Hindus and not for other communities. Yes. Shubho uh, Vijaya to all, Dev Jyoti Sharkar, I was appalled to see uh, Quran and the Bible with Bhagavad Gita in a puja pandal. <laughs> Apparently they wanted to do it. <laughs> that, that never ends. <laughs> yeah, I know that shit. Uh, these in, uh, income poops were uh, are dooming our Hindu society. But Dada, I think we should preserve our clothing culture as well. Yes. As, as much as possible. Accepting different... M I, and that does not have to be a non-negotiable. That's all I'm saying. Uh, in, uh, based on uh, personal choices, I'm, I'm all for it, of course. Wear dhoti, dhoti anything, dhoti, kurta, uh, konchika, anything. And that's my view on casteism and uh, varna, varna system as well. In your family, you take whatever decision you want to take. If you are an entrepreneur, hire only people from your own varna. See where your business goes. Not, not in terms of law. I saw some videos on YouTube saying that Sanatan Dharma is becoming popular in Africa. Yeah, weirdly. But that's with the help of ISKCON, so... Sri Rohit Arya refers to this uh, attitude as Sarva Dharma Sam <laughs> Vada Pao. Uh, but that Alberuni was aware that he was Mlecha according to, <laughs> to us. That's why I believe he is more uh, learned in Puranas than most Hindus though he strawmans us, I see. Why are we discussing this in Shakta live stream? Because we were discussing all the books I bought on, uh, on, on, on Durga Puja. So we are a little bit still discussing Durga Puja and our things we did in Durga Puja. And then we will start Shakti and Shakta as soon as possible. Oh, Shen Moshai, multi identity money, <laughs> Jati Varna Kula Gotra ke support coach. <laughs> Eta the Brahminical conspiracy, Pura Manusmiti Chapidila. <laughs> Kotonilo Bugulo, yes. Please stop mentioning these Arya Samajis who nowadays post new Dimare uh, Bhai. Uh, you will see, a, uh, you will learn a lot from Bhaduriji. Yeah. And that's what I was one of the reasons why I bought this because I haven't read any detailed uh, Ramayan. I read only the Ramayana for kids written by Satyajit Ray's grandfather. So I need some. Uh, uh real detail details of of at least the characters but this is a commentary i'm a i'm big on primary sources but i'm not reading the bibek debra ramayana anytime soon so i thought why not and my vocabulary bengali vocabulary uh based on on, on topics like ramayana also needs to improve so for all these reasons i bought the uh this uh, nishinga prasad bhaduri version and so being being a fan of primary sources then why am i buying uh, sir john woodruff's shakti and shakta for the single reason that Rajarshi Nondi has endorsed this person. That's the only reason. That's how I came to know of him. That's how I, I came to read a little bits of his work on internet archives. And I really understood that his intentions are in the right place. He loves this culture. He basically converted to Hinduism. And he was a sadhaka himself. And he wants to uh, write the truth about our culture. So if, if that's the case, then why not learn some gist about some things uh, on, on Hinduism? Uh, primary source to waise bhi baad mein padhenge hi season 2 of aspirants is interesting there is interesting ideological battle between socialist and pro industrialist approach nice nice congress and liberals deracinated our martial tradition so they are equally damaging yeah absolutely uh, he is more or less correct but has no knowledge of islam uh, what will happen oldest uh, skull find in india i see i don't know africa was a forest dwelling society it was entirely different they were vanvasis yes uh, left his friends be like quoting Hindu shlokas and con uh, and concluding we should not <laughs> fight all or one. Are bhai, read the. <laughs> there is a YouTube video bit uh, video between Vivek Debra and Rashingo Bhaduri on dharma. I see. Uh, they vote for us. Uh, you as one block if you allow them special rights. Of course, yeah. Uh, true, I don't understand. After reading just the uh, yeah, are nilo kato bolo boigulo and gantan nam bolo. Yeah, uh, I said that. Uh, there is a YouTube video. Left it friends be like quoting. Okay, Africa was a forest dwelling society. What will happen, oldest girl? Okay, Lol Rohit Arya is not an Arya Samaji. He is a follower of, follower of Sri Aurobindo and Swami Vivekananda. And he is big on Shatra spirit as well. Um, also, he is a practitioner of Pranayam and Kriya Yoga path. And he is a friend of Rajeshri Nandi, yes. 
Few years ago, there was Durga Pandal decorated with footwear to show solidarity with farmers' protest. <coughs> <coughs> Dedicated to Hamara Pyar. Oh, acha. I confuse this person, Risha B- B- Bhadu Bhiduri. Oh, acha. Some say Jai Shri Ram cries at Santosh Mitra Square felt like screams of freedom. Kintu koi ekta kamon mathalar chitkar mathal. Yes, only Northern Africa was uh, nothing in Sub-Saharan, but ironically, most mineral resources are concentrated in Sub-Saharan Africa, even more than Eurasian. Yes. So let me tell you about the debate I had. Um, uh, I was the only one my age, and there was one friend of mine. Uh, he's like a brother. He was five, six years younger. Everyone else was my parents' age or much older than them as well. So there, and each and every one is a communist over there. So there, an old person, uh, a friend of my father, was uh, after the lunch and all. They brought up the topic of Israel. So before that, I was uh, getting a bit bored. I was thinking now let's what to do maybe I'll go home. So when they brought up the topic of Palestine I I sat up straight <laughs> and got warmed up okay so now finally I have something to talk about. So uh, that that senior and he's a uh, senior professor uh, and he's a pretty well known scientist all around the world. So he brought up the topic of uh, Palestine I got up and uh, then I, I uh, he was saying that See, uh, people are sending money to Palestine. All the Muslim countries are sending money to Palestine to simply send these people to die in wars. Okay, they don't have the best interests of Palestinians in their hearts. Okay, that's kind of a neutral view to take. Uh, and uh, I went there and said that, uh, see, Kaku Kaku means uncle in Bengali. That uh, even European Union, who at least on theory does not really want them to die, is sending them pipes. Those pipes are being used by <laughs> them to to build rockets, and they they have built three hundred miles of tunnels underground to kill Israelis. So they have no intentions of being alive in in the first place. Uh, so then that uh, Kaku says that yeah, it's it's like Indian Army that uh, these people are just raised and and raised for slaughter. They are they are made they are they are funded for j- getting uh, getting killed someday. So I said that yeah, but then the only difference is that the Indian Army does not go and uh, strike someone first without any uh, reason. So then the elderly uh, uncle, uh, communist uncle, uh, starts off with a very aggressive tone that who, who, who is attacking without any provocation? I said Palestine, and that blew his mind. He said, "What? Go read history. Go read Palestine history of of seventy five years." I said uh, I I was pretty calm. I was having fun. I got an excuse to get into the discussion of of these old uh, uncles with whom I have never really, really discussed politics before that day. So uh, and uh, and I know that these things uh, trigger communists, right? Because communists are usually debating among themselves that who is really a communist. Where are my heretics, bro? Where where are you all heretics at? So <laughs> according to them, CPIM is the most right wing fundamentalist pro capitalist party in in the country, right? So uh, and this this uh, elderly kaku is basically had some uh, n- naxal leanings as well uh, in his youth. So uh, he he got a gigantic shock when I said that uh, Palestine is attacking uh, without any provocation because he is used to everyone supporting Palestine. That uh, everyone might have some disagreements that oh Palestine should have approached this way, Palestine should have approached this way, but they are really the victims, bro. Kya kare? And I am coming here and saying that Palestine is the one to blame. so that was a huge shock to his uh, mind of course so i was very calm and casual and i said palestine is palestine is doing it unprovoked so he said 75 years of history read that very aggressively i was still calm and i said that communist history is not the only history and uh, then he says that no you don't know anything so uh, so when someone is is repeatedly aggr- <laughs> aggressive with me in a debate that's when i decide that uh, it's not time for dialectics now it's the time for just winning a debate and uh, debate is basically a wwe of 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 the mind right Di- dialectics is a real conversation that yes i know you have uh, best interests at heart i know you are an honest guy let's let's talk things out and come to a nice solution but debate is when yeah i'll come up with absolutely weird and hilarious arguments just to just to uh, k- kill your argument basically so i started saying that uh in in bengali there's a saying that golper goru gache uthe okay uh, which means that uh, in in a fictional story even a cow can climb up a tree so i said that in a fictional story a cow can climb up a tree and in in marxist history a cow can climb up to the sky and uh, 
then i said that uh, 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 have you uh, why why did jogenonath mondol mondol have to leave bangladesh why is there problems with the same sorts of people in bengal in pakistan in afghanistan in kashmir then he said that what what has that got to do with palestine i said that everything has to has to do with that particular thing and he said again that read your history i said that have you read quran he said what has got to what has that got to do with this so i uh, again just got into provoking him and and uh, triggering him for for no apparent reason because by then i had given up a sane conversation and i was just debating for fun and i said that uh, uh shama prashad mukherji saved you if he wasn't there you would have a beard this long and your name would be hasan etc all all those hilarious stuff so one <laughs> one of our uh, a, 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 a person who was uh, much younger to all these uncles i call him an uncle as well uh, so he was i saw him uh, sitting by the sofa smiling okay and looking at me and i all my life i knew that he is also uh, a far leftist oh by the way one other uncle who have always known to be a far left commie he started uh, joining in the debate and said that yes answer him why did jogendranath mondol had to li- have to leave uh, bangladesh all your now that uncle is is telling that elderly far left commie uncle that all your revolution all your uh, communist things you all do it in india only why couldn't you do it in bangladesh so then that uncle says that elderly uh, communist uncle says that uh no uh, we we will never have to run run away from anything uh, if we have to, we do have to run away some day we will have to run from hindutvadis so i said where will you run pakistan or bangladesh he said why will we run uh, we will stand and fight so i said that why didn't you fight in bangladesh so then that uncle again took it up that yeah why couldn't you do it back then why did jogendranath mondol had to leave etc so somehow that other uncle has been convinced about in indian right wing hindutva arguments maybe he won't vote for bjp as of yet but these argu- arguments are percolating pretty deep okay random uncles in bengal who are not social media savvy they know these arguments now okay something is going on <laughs> going on pretty s- strange so the much younger uncle says uh, takes me to to the side and says that i'm really glad that you are having this discussion and you have a uh, different view point from the people of that generation uh, but you see uh that's not the only way to look at things there are other ways to look at things so then we got a, got into a larger uh, honest discussion bas- that was basically dialectics and that uh, he was basically an individualism guy kind of guy so i was wondering okay now where is this this breed of bengali guy coming from because he he does not read english books much he is uh, extremely good in bengali and he reads only books uh, bengali books all day so uh, he so he is not going to go to youtube and watch uh, jordan peterson's videos etc so where is he getting these arguments from so then i learned that okay he has read all these amartyan ideas as well that identity politics is bad etc but one thing i had to correct him uh, he was repeatedly saying that it's so great that your generation has become uh, has had so different fresh views you have become a musician that other uh, guy who who i said is like my brother he is also a musician he's a drummer so it's so great that both of you have taken a different path uh, which is which is so different from the things we did in our generation so i said that uh, see uncle it's not really our credit it's not just our doing many people in a, even in our past generations would have liked to become you- youtubers musicians uh, uh, drummers arrangers as well but it was prashanta chandra mohalanobesh because we were just before that we were watching a documentary on Pushan, uh, pc mahalanobish so i had to b- bring up this point that it's it was because of pe- people like pc mahalanobish and especially pc mahalanobish his policies is why india was so impoverished that people in our previous generations could not become poets musicians etc okay so many dreams have been crushed so many people's lives have been dehumanized so many people have had to give up on their dreams for no fucking reason other than going to uh, uh, waiting for a government job for their entire lives and he he specifically asked because he was trying to be sarcastic that wh- what 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 did pc mohalanobish really do wrong he, maybe he was testing me that let's see how much i know so i said that he was a licensed raj guy uh, and he said that what has really changed now so i said that now people don't really look at rich people as enemies or evil people don't look at businessmen as uh, evil people 
starting a business is much easier and see because of that even with bengal's gdp growth rate being just 8 to 10% whereas ahmedabad up uh, gujarat up these places have uh, gdp growth rates of about <coughs> uh, 18% 19% even in such a state like west bengal even in kolkata there are countless restaurants and pubs coming up everywhere even in that small neighborhood alley there's a tattoo parlor there's a burger joint in that south kolkata uh bangal bangladeshi refugee colony okay can you believe that no one believes these things no one can believe these things no one could have thought of these things 5 to 10 years back 15 years back okay these were impossible first of all why the fuck would someone build that anyway who was going to consume that product okay all this is going on and people keep saying that bjp is doing hindu muslim राम मंदिर हो रहा है और कुछ नहीं हो रहा है गरीब लोगों के पास खाने को, uh, को रोटी नहीं है पहनने को कपड़े नहीं है दैट सेम बुल शिट इज गोइंग ऑन मीन वाइल मैजिकली एवरी वेयर देर इज अ रेस्टोरेंट गोइंग ऑन ओके कमिंग अप एंड एवरी एवरी वन हैज मनी टू गो टू दीज रेस्टोरेंट बट आई हैड टू बी मोर स्पेसिफिक टू टू हैमर होम द पॉइंट दैट 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 ड्रमर ब्रदर ऑफ माइन ही मेक्स अ टन ऑफ मनी प्लेइंग ऑल ऑल मैरिज गेग्स पब शोज एवरी थिंग ओके नाउ हिज बैंड Uh, the the skill set that they have i had that skill set at, in terms of guitaring at least guitar playing even in 2010 2011 okay but back then even because this pub scene this gigantic uh, marriage party band scene was not there in bengal at least even i could not earn money through that scene that's why i i had a job and i uh, started uh, learning music production because for in the, even in 2011 2010 The only way a guitarist would make money is by teaching guitar, or you had to play in those proper Kishor Kumar orchestras. You would have to learn how to play nila nila number par exact note to note. Otherwise, you would have you would be out of a job. You would you would have to pick up fifty to sixty of uh, Hemant Mukherjee, Manna De, Kishor Kumar songs. Otherwise, go fuck off. Now every pub, every marriage ceremony wants a rock version of some song or the other. Okay. or or sufi sufi rock version of something or funk version of some bollywood uh, uh, song and uh, and so many musicians from a from a impoverished state like bengal are making lakhs of rupees and bjp is doing hindu muslim and making ram mandir nothing else is going on in the country as i said hindu consciousness is taking root beyond political inclinations yes bharat er army na thakle erao thakto na why communists have so much disrespect for indian army yes uh, we have to give uh, narasimha rao credit for this no okay that's a big misconception narasimha rao does not deserve a single bit of uh, credit for this first of all because he was a madman who came up with the places of worship act and work of act secondly his back was up to the wall there was nowhere to go okay if your back is literally up on the wall and you have you have been weak all your life you have made every mistake you can make and then your back is on the wall and then when someone is beating you up with 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 your neck on the wall and you just do this much in defense that does not mean make you make you superman or batman he does not deserve any credit india's gdp growth rate had become 1% or 1.1% in in uh, i think 5 uh, or 4 years prior to that our gdp growth rate had become minus 1 2% even as well and then the kuwait war happens okay uh, uh, saddam invades kuwait oil is gone we have no money for any fucking thing meanwhile ib is spending la- crores of rupees uh, finding out who are uh, the people contacting gumnami baba and then imf we have to go to beg to imf imf says kya re bossi wale पैसा चाहिए एफ डी आई करो नहीं तो जाओ घर में दैट्स वेन द रेंज आर गिवन ओवर टू मनमोहन सिंह एंड ही हैंडल्स द सिचुएशन आई आई वुड वेरी हैप्पीली गिव क्रेडिट टू मनमोहन सिंह नो फकिंग वे टू पी वी नरसिम्हा राव इवन माई डैड गेव द सेम आर्ग्यूमेंट ऑफ सो मेनी रेस्टोरेंट बींग सक्सेसफुल इन वेस्ट बंगाल यस लिसन टू माविरन बी जी एम्स आई सी क्वाइट यूनिक कम्पोजिशन आई सी राम मुद्दीन सुंदर भास्कर्य देखे बिरोधी मन घोले जाए झाड़ चले जाए Okay, now we start. Shakti and Shakta. Last political talk I had with my father was long back, uh, but they know what the patharvas uh, do, but my mother doesn't. Hmm. Okay, I had one other intre- very insane conversation with my with a close relative. 
she is also uh, she is about 80 85 year no uh, 78 years old she is also uh, basically a commie minded person so um she she bought uh, she also went to that communist book stall with me she bought two books by a bengali commie historian uh i forgot her name sudipa or sutopa bhattacharya uh, i don't i don't think she is alive anymore she she was a very old person so um she has a phd and stuff she has written two thin bengali books on why ramayana uh, ramayana is a very anti woman uh, text it's her uh, that that's the analysis of her those two books and while discussing those two books uh, i'm still wondering what this book is about and i'm skimming through them at the same time when i'm seeing that okay this this says that ram was a horrible person etc ramayana is bad at that moment that that elderly family member who is 78 years old she says that um, she was a very uh, okay in bengali uh, she said spashtobadi okay uh, uh, a person who is a fearless person and and speaks clearly speaks her mind al- always so i said that okay she is saying all this about hindu scriptures but she will never say the same things about islamic scriptures so how is that uh, a, a gutsy thing to do that elderly person uh, came up with a pretty insane argument and which i corroborated with some other people that yes uh, that other liberal and comi friends of mine that yes they have the same view that yes we know muslims won't accept criticism we are not we are not counting them in this discussion this discussion is only for hindus we we need these criti- uh, critics to keep hinduism uh, as great as it is if these criticisms don't happen from commies hinduism will become as uh, bad as that other thing okay Th- so that was a fascinating and new uh, argument i heard for the first time in my life and that seems to be a pretty common argument among some leftists and liberals that yes yes we know bengali mein doodhbad bolte hain ya chhod do unko we are talking just about hinduism because we want to keep hinduism great and that's why they need to be need to be criticized my father was always a sanghi hence i grew up as a hindutva in, uh, in fact i am more hardline in my views uh, <coughs> where do you live outside india i have a pakistani <laughs> roommate bahut din par apna darshan pelam yes <coughs> okay so i'm not reading the prefaces guys uh it's the third edition basically <coughs> and there are uh, three prefaces basically saying that uh, what approach he has taken and in in all the three prefaces uh, prefaces he has very uh, overtly said that everyone who has written to written about H- hindu culture tantra or shaktism every one of them is a dumb fuck they don't know what they are what the fuck they are talking about and they they could not ac- accept the fact that an, a, a a colored culture a, a people belonging to belonging to a culture who have colored skin they could be superior they could not uh, tolerate that or or swallow that in their in their pride they wrote all sorts of bullshit in the name of orientalism that's the <laughs> preface uh, arthur avalon starts with okay so we will start with uh, the the code uh, text so the first chapter is called indian religion as bharata dharma wow that's the very aurobindo sort of view isn't it let's see what's his point shakti and shakta chapter 1 indian religion as bharata dharma a friend of mine who read the first edition of this book suggested that i should add it add to it an opening chapter stating the most general and fundamental principles of the subject as a guide to the understanding of what fo- uh, what follows together with an outline of the latter in which the relation of the several parts should be known i have not at present the time nor in the present book the space to give effect to my friend's wishes in the way i would have desired but will not altogether neglect them to the western indian religion generally seems a jungle of contradictory beliefs amidst which amidst which he is lost only those who have understood its main principles can show them the path it has been asserted that there is no such thing as indian religion though there are many religions in india this is not so as i have already pointed out in my book is india civilized there is a common indian religion which i have called bharata dharma which is an aryan religion yeah back then everyone believed in aryan invasion theory which is an aryan religion or arya dharma held by all aryas whether brahmanic buddhist or jain so he is calling buddhist and jains and brahmins aryans okay this is the point i had made when we were discussing rahul sankritian one day remember that uh, rahul sankritian 
even though he is a communist buddhist uh, travel log historian uh, writer he casually mentions uh, on his in his book that tibbat mein sawa saal i was reading it reading it in bengali while traveling from sri lanka to nepal on foot while uh, uh, traversing the indian regions he says that so i saw many common people and i saw brahmins buddhists and jains okay these are the three main divisions of the bharata dharma i exclude other religions in india namely the semitic religions judaism christianity and islam not that uh, all these are purely semitic christianity became in part aryanized when it was adopted by the western aryans as also happened with islam when accepted by such eastern aryans as the persians and the aryanized peoples of india the 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 sufism is either a form of vedanta or indebted to uh, vedanta the general religion or bharata dharma holds that the or or proposes that the world is an order or cosmos it is not a chaos of things and beings thrown haphazard together in which there is no binding relation or rule it's not that the world order is dharma which is that by which the universe is upheld dharyate without dharma it would fall into pieces and dissolve into nothingness but this is not possible because though there is disorder or adharma it exists and can exist only locally for a time and in particular parts of the whole order however will and from the nature of things must ultimately assert itself and this is the meaning of the sayings that righteousness or dharma prevails this is in the nature of things for dharma is not a law imposed from without by the uh, imposed from without by the ukase of some celestial czar it is the nature of things that which constitutes them what they are <coughs> that which constitutes them what they are uh, svalakshana svalakshana uh, dharanat dharma it is the expression of their true being and can only cease to be when they themselves cease to be just like sri aurobindo says in his uttar para speech that if if uh, this land called bharatavarsha was capable of uh, no no if sanatan dharma were capable of perishing then with that this land would also perish belief in righteousness is uh, belief in righteousness is is then in something not arbitrarily imposed from without by a lawgiver but belief in a principle of reason which all men can recognize for themselves if they will again dharma is not only the law of each being but necessarily also of the whole and expresses the right relations of each part to the whole the framework this whole is again harmonious otherwise it would dissolve the principle which holds it together as one mighty organism is dharma the particular dharma Uh, calls for such recognition and action in accordance therewith religion therefore which etymologically means that which obliges or binds together is in its most fundamental sense the recognition that the world is an order of which each man being and thing is a part and to which each man stands in a definite established relation relation with that whole together with action based on and consistent with such recognition and in harmony with the whole cosmic activity wills willst therefore the religious man is he who feels that he is bound in varying ways to all being the irreligious man is he who ego- egotistically considers everything from the standpoint of his limited self and its interests without regard for his fellows or the world at large the essentially irreligious character of such an attitude attitude is shown by the fact that if it were adopted by all if everyone became such irreligious people it would lead to the negation of cosmos that is chaos therefore all religions are agreed in the essentials of morality and hold that selfishness in its widest sense is the root of all sin or adharma morality is thus the true nature of man the general dharma or samanya dharma is the universal law governing all just as the particular dharma vishesha dharma varies with and is peculiar to each class of being <coughs> it follows from what is above stated with that disharmony is suffering this is an obvious fact wrong conduct is productive of ill 
as right conduct is productive of good as a man sows so he will reap there is an immanent justice but these results though they may appear at once do not always do so the fruit of no action the fruit of no action is lost it must according to the law of causality which is a law of reason bear effect okay karma phal kabhi na kabhi aayega hi if its author does not suffer for for it here and now in the present life he will do in some future one birth and death mean the creation and destruction of bodies the spirits so embodied are an infinite in number and eternal the material universe comes and goes this in brahmanism has been said uh, see uh, in the book sanatana vaidika dharma by bhagwan das this in uh, Brahm- uh, brahmanism has been said to be quote the systole and diastole of the one universal heart itself at rest the moveless play of consciousness end quote the appearance and disappearance of the universe is the nature of swabhava of or nature or swabhava of that that with capital t okay swabhava swabhava of that which it ultimately is okay the appearance and disappearance of the universe is the swabhava of that which it ultimately is its ultimate uh, its immediate cause is desire which buddhism calls trishna or thirst that is desire or thirst for world enjoyment in the universe of form action or karma is prompted by desire and breeds a- again desire this action may be good dharma or bad adharma leading to enjoyment or suffering each embodied soul each embodied soul or jivatma will be reborn and reborn into the world until it is freed from all desire this involves the doctrine of reincarnation these multiple births and deaths in the transmigratory worlds are called samsara or wandering the world is a dvandva d v n d v a n d v a what is this word how is the pronunciation supposed to be dvandva i don't know <coughs> the world is a dvandva that is a composite of happiness and suffering okay probably dondo in bengali happiness of a transitory kind may uh, may be had therein by adherence to the dharma in following kama desire and artha the means by which lawful desires may be given effect these constitute what brahmanism calls the trivarga of the purush uh, purushartha or three aims of sentient being but just as desire leads to manifestation in form no desirelessness leads away from it <laughs> let me underline this just as desire leads to manifestation in form so des- or not no so desirelessness leads away from from it away away from form uh, yeah those who reach this state seek moksha or nirvana the fourth purushartha which is a state of bliss beyond the worlds of changing forms for there is a rest from suffering which desire uh, brings upon them together with a natural tendency to pass its right uh, right limits they must therefore either live with desire in harmony with the universal order or if desireless they may pass beyond the manifest and become that that with capital t that which is moksha or nirvana because each is master of his future religion and therefore true civilization consists in in the upholding of dharma as the individual and general good and the fostering of spiritual progress so that with justice to all human uh, all beings true happiness which is the immediate and ultimate end of all humanity and in need of all being may be attained anyone who holds these beliefs follows the bharata dharma or common principles of all aryan beliefs thus as regards god we may either deny his existence atheism or affirm it theism or say we have no sufficient proof uh, one way or another agnosticism it is possible to accept the concept of an eternal law dharma and its sanctions in a self-governed universe without belief in a personal lord or ishvara so samkhya which proceeds on intellectual proof only does not deny god but holds that the being of a lord is not proved quote unquote quote unquote not proved there are then based on this common foundation three main religions brahmanism buddhism and jainism of the second a great and universal faith it has been said that uh, meaning buddhism 
with each fresh acquirement of knowledge it seems more difficult to separate it from the hinduism out of which it emerged and into which in northern buddhism it relapsed this is of course not to say that there are no differences between the two but that they share in certain uh, but they that, but that they share in certain general and common principles as their base brahmanism of which the shakta doctrine and practice is a particular form accepts veda as its ultimate authority by this in its form uh, as the four vedas is revealed the doctrine of the brahman the all pervader the quote unquote all pervader the infinite substance which is in itself swarupa consciousness chaitanya or chit from which comes creation maintenance and withdrawal commonly called destruction though man not god destroys and which in its relation to the universe which the brahman controls is known as ishvara its relation to the universe which the brahman co- uh, controls is known as ishvara the ruling lord or personal god veda both as uh, spiritual experience and the word uh, veda which is heard shruti is the warrant for this but shruti as the ultimate authority has received various interpretations and so we find in brahmanism as in christianity differing schools and sects adopting various interpretations of the revealed word veda says all this that is the universe is brahman all are agreed that brahman or spirit is relatively to us being sat con- uh, sat chit ananda b- con- bliss uh, b- uh, being consciousness and bliss it is sat chit ananda but in what sense is this okay quote and quote this or idam in what sense is this brahman the monistic interpretation or advaita vada as given for instance by the great scholastic sankaracharya is that there is a complete identity in essence of both there is one spirit or atma with two aspects as transcendent supreme paramatma and as immanent and embodied jivatma this is i i have to underline this transcendent supreme transcendent uh, supreme paramatma and immanent and embodied jivatma the two are at base one the, the two are at base one when we eliminate avidya in the form of mind and body according to the qualified um, uh, according to the qualified monism or vishishta uh, vishishta dvaita of the great scholastic ramanuja that quote unquote this is brahman in the sense that it is the body of the brahman just as we disting- distinguish our body from our inner self according to the dualists or dvaitavada and the saying is interpreted in terms of nearness or samipya and likeness sadrishya because though god and man are distinct the former so pervades okay god pervades and is so inextricably involved in the universe as creator and maintainer that the latter the man in this sense seems to be brahman through proximity proximity to god then again there is the uh, shuddha dvaita of that branch of the agamas which is called shaiva siddhanta the vaishnava panchatantra doctrine the dvaita of the kashmirian shaiva agama shaiva agama trika the followers of which through uh, the followers of which though advaitins have very subtly criticized shankara's doctrine on several points difference of views upon this question and that of the nature of maya which the world is said to be necessarily implies difference upon other matters of doctrine necessarily implies difference upon other matters of doctrine then there are then there are with many resemblances some differences in ritual practice thus it comes about that brahmanism includes many divisions of worshipers calling themselves by different names there are smarthas who are the present day representatives of the old vedic doctrine and ritual practice and on the uh, and on the other hand a number of divisions of worshipers calling themselves shaktas Saiv, uh, shaivas vaishnavas and so forth with subdivisions of these it is not possible to make hard and fast distinctions between the sects which share much in common and have been influenced uh, one by uh, one by the other indeed the universality of much of religious doctrine and practice is an established fact what exists in india as elsewhere today uh, has in other times and places been in varying degrees anticipated quote unquote in religion it has been said 
in in the book uh, gnostics and their remains in uh, ver- b- book 7 that quote there is no new thing the same ideas are worked up over and over again end quote in india as elsewhere but particularly in india where religious activity has been syncretistic rather than by way of su- uh, superstition there is much which is common to all sects and more again which is common between particular groups of sects these latter are governed in general that is uh, in their older forms by the agamas or tantra shastras which at any rate today and for centuries past whatever may have been their origin admit the authority of the vedas and recognize other scriptures as to th- uh, these as to these see the introduction to the uh, kaulacharya satyananda's commentary on the isha upanishad which i have published <coughs> the meaning of veda is not commonly rightly understood but this is a vast subject which underlies all others touching as it does the seat of all authority and knowledge in which i have not the space to enter here there are four main classes of brahmanical scripture namely veda or shruti smriti purana and agama there are also four ages or yugas the latter being a fraction of a kalpa or day of brahma of um, 4 billion 320 uh, 20 million years This period is the life of an universe on the expiration of which all re-enters Brahman and thereafter issues from it. A Mahayuga is composed of the four ages called Satya, Treta, Dvapara, uh, Kali, the first being the golden age of righteousness since when all has gradually declined physically, morally and spiritually. For each of the ages a suitable Shastra is given. For Satya or, uh, or Krita, the Vedas, for treta the smriti shastra for dvapara the puranas and for kaliyuga the agama or tantra sh- tantra shastra so the kularnava tantra says kritre uh, krite uh, okay I, i should not really pronounce uh, horribly with these these terms let's see if the translation is given okay it's not given L- then let me just try it krite shrutyukta uh, achara आचारास्त्रेयतायम स्मृति संभवा द्वापरे तु पुराणोक्त कला 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 वागम सम्मता वन थिंग यू हैव टू नो इज इस्कॉन्स ट्रांसलेशंस और द वे दे राइट संस्कृत इन इंग्लिश दैट्स द बेस्ट दैट्स वन थिंग यू कांट क्रिटिसाइज इस्कॉन फॉर मैन इफ आई इफ आई रीड एन इंग्लिश बुक ऑफ इस्कॉन इन फ्रंट ऑफ फ्रंट ऑफ यू you'll you'll uh, f- you'll think that i'm fluent in sanskrit it's so easy to read so this quote is from uh, mahanirvana tantra also okay no no that this is from kularnava kularnava tantra but uh, the author says that see also mahanirvana tantra uh, and the uh, tara pradipa says that in the kaliyuga the supposed present age the tantrika and not the vaidika dharma in the sense of mode of life and ritual is to be followed Uh, see my book principles of tantra interesting i never knew this when it is said that the agama is the peculiar scripture for the kali age this does not mean at any rate to any particular division of its followers that something is presented which is opposed to veda okay it is true however that as between these followers there is sometimes a conflict on the question whether a particular form of the agama is unvedic or avedic or not the agama however as a whole purports to be a Uh, pr- uh, pr- uh, presentment of the teaching of veda just as the puranas and smritis are it is that presentment of uh, presentment of vedic truth which is suitable for the kali age indeed the shakta followers of the agama claim that its tantras contain the very core of the veda to which it is described to bear the same relation as the supreme spirit or paramatma to the embodied spirit or jivatma in a similar way in the seven tantric acharas kolachara is the controlling informing life of the gross body called vedachara each of the acharas which follow the latter up to the kolachara being more and more subtle sheets okay sheets uh, spelling is s h e a t h s okay sheet uh, basically means jiske andar wo talwar ghusate hai usko bhi sheet bolte hai to anything that holds or is a cover is called sheet so let's listen to this sentence once again uh, in in a similar way in the seven tantric acharas Kolachara is the controlling informing life of the gross body called Vedachara 
each of the acharas which follow the latter up to the kolachara being more and more subtle sheets the tantra shastra is thus the presentment of vedantic truth which is modeled as regards mode of life and ritual to meet the characteristics and infirmities of the kaliyuga as men have no longer the capacity longevity and moral strength required to carry out the vedika karma kanda or ritual section the tantra shastra prescribes a sadhana of its own for the attainment of the common end of all shastra that is a happy life of uh, a happy life on earth a heaven thereafter and at length liberation religion is in fact the true pursuit of happiness of course sukhasya mulam dharma as explained in the uh, next and following chapters this agama which governs according to its followers the kaliyuga is itself divided into several schools or communities of worshippers one of these divisions is the shakta it is with shakta doctrine and worship one of the forms of brahmanism which is again a form of the general bharata dharma that this book deals oh, okay let me just check some comments for a while yes we are followers followers of shankaracharya we uh, we followers of shankaracharya are called smarters 4 lakh 32000s right wait let me f- f- confirm i forget the hisab mm, no no uh bhartiya sabhyata no 1000 lakh crore 432 crore okay lakh 10000 yeah 432 crore years भाई हमार फ्रेंड्स और अभी बजरंग दल मेम्बर बोलना कि करा जाए बोलो भलो कथा तो तुम्हें बाँचा ओद के जेदिन जेदिन जहाज़ डूबे मोस्ट अफ इट इज वेदिक बट साम पार्ट्स कैन भी ट्रेस टू वेदास वाट यूर टकिंग अबाउट आगमज ओके येस वी नो लंगर येस नो लंगर उ कैन डू वेदिक कर्मकांड इट्स ट्रू आई हैड नो आइडिया अबाउट दिस वाई इज इट सेंग दैट एंड वाई आई मीन वाई आर यू अग्रिंग विद दिस वाई वाट इज सो इम्पसिबल अबाउट वेदिक कर्मकांड इंटरेस्टिंग uh okay <clears throat> let me have some coffee okay i thought I, i was going to be too sleepy so i made some coffee coffee but i forgot to drink it because we were having such a fruitful and and juicy conversation from the very beginning of this live stream this is fascinating this is my first sip of coffee today after debating many of my leftist friends it seems po- pointless my clear arguments cannot <laughs> piece the thick walls of false premises they have built since childhood through <laughs> through garbage sources no no it's never pointless do it for fun sometimes do it like i said that uh, uh, without shama prasad mukherjee you would have a beard this long uh, have have fun with the debates but but carry it on never let them forget that there are people standing in front of them or around them who disagree with them vehemently on these things these things are not a, not a given that rss is a, is a brahminical patriarchal organization Narendra Modi is just doing Hindu Muslim and building Ram Mandir nothing else is happening in India Palestine is the innocent sweet victim these things they have hammered in their screwed stamped in their branded in their brains okay so we need to also keep on hammering that no no these things are not just a little wrong these are vehemently fascinatingly wrong and and give them the absolute 180 degree different points that and so that they understand that so many people actually don't agree with them read some other it requires sacrifices sacrifices of what what sacrifices are not possible today uh, animal sacrifices or or wo ashwamedha okay <coughs> the shakta is also called because he is a worshipper of shakti or power that is god in mother form as the supreme power which creates sustains and withdraws the universe his rule of life is shakta dharma his doctrine of, his doctrine of shakti is shakti vada or shakta darshana god is worshiped as the great mother because in this aspect god is active and produces nourishes and maintains all theological godhead is no more female than male or neuter god is mother to the sadhaka who worships her lotus feet the <coughs> her lotus feet uh the, the the dust on which the dust on that lotus feet are millions of universes 
the power or active aspect of the immanent god is thus called shakti in her static transcendent aspect the mother or shakti or shiva is of the same nature uh, or a shiva is the same nature as shiva or the good that is philosophically speaking shiva is the unchanging consciousness and shakti is its changing power appearing as mind and matter shiva shakti is therefore consciousness and its power this then is the doctrine of dual aspects of the one brahman acting through its trinity of powers ichha will gyana knowledge and kriya action in the static transcendent uh, aspect shiva the one brahman does not change and in the kinetic immanent aspect that is shive or shakti it does change there is thus changelessness in change okay there is changelessness in change the individual or embodied spirit jivatma is one with the transcendent spirit or paramatma the former is a part or amsa of the latter and the enveloping mind and body are manifestations of supreme power shakta darshana is therefore a form of monism advaitavada in creation an effect is produced with without change in the producer okay in creation an effect is produced without change in the producer in creation the power or shakti goes forth or prasarati prasarati uh in a series of emanations or transformations which are called in the shaiva and shakta tantras the 36 tattvas these mark the various stages through which shiva the supreme consciousness as shakti presents itself as object to itself as subject the latter at first experiencing the former as part of the self and then through the operations of maya shakti as different from the self this is the final stage in which every self or purusha is mutually exclusive of the other maya which achieves this is one of the powers of the mother or devi the will to become many bahu swayam prajaya prajayeya bahu syam bahu syam prajaya prajayeya the will to become many is the creative impulse which not only creates but reproduces an eternal order and this is word for word what which was written by the music producer's book i was reading rick rubin which i was saying no that he is talking about hinduism without na- knowing that he is talking about hinduism that creative impulse was literally the exact phrase he re- used repeatedly the lord remembers the diversities latent in his own maya shakti due to the previous karmas of jeevas and allows them to unfold themselves by his volition it is that power by which infinite formless consciousness veils itself to itself okay veils itself to itself that infinite formless consciousness veils itself to itself and negates and limits itself in order that it may experience itself as form this maya shakti assumes the form of prakriti tattva which is composed of three gunas or factors called sattva rajas tamas the function of prakriti is to veil limit or finiteize pure infinite formless consciousness so as to produce form because without such limitation there cannot be the appearance of form what a beautiful sentence now um i don't know how uh, proper i mean the people who have been uh, believers of these texts and god etc from a childhood will react to what i'm about to say but Uh, since uh, my my brain is basically epistemically still an atheist right so i still look for atheist reasoning or uh, or apply an atheist lens to everything and and still uh, find uh, that everything has an atheist explanation uh, in in uh, any hindu practice or theory okay uh, i mean i could be totally atheist and still find justification for even tantric or ritualistic w- uh, worships everything if you are an atheist uh, th- you you still sh- should be uh, should be a practicing hindu but anyway notice this particular thing that was just said that in order to produce form without such limitation there cannot be the appearance of form you have no idea how true this is in in uh, at least in the field of a- everything it's it's a- a- applicable but it reminds me that 
दिस इज वन मिस्टेक मेड बाई बिगिनर म्यूजिशियंस पीपल हु मेक म्यूजिक प्रोफेशनली दे नो हाउ ट्रू दिस कॉन्सेप्ट इज दैट अनलेस यू हैव सम लिमिटेशन इन योर वर्क यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू एंड अप फिनिशिंग दैट सॉन्ग ओके देर हैज टू बी अ डेड लाइन इफ देर इज नो क्लाइंट डेड लाइन देन यू हैव टू सेट अ डेड लाइन अपॉन योर सेल्फ और से यू हैव अनलिमिटेड एक्सेस टू अनलिमिटेड सॉफ्टवेयर बिकॉज ऑफ पायरेसी देन यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू हैव यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू एंड अप फिनिशिंग और मिक्सिंग दैट सॉन्ग ओके लिमिटेशन आर ऑलवेज नेसेसरी फॉर फॉर गिविंग शेप एंड फाइनली एग्जीक्यूटिंग समथिंग वेरी इंटरेस्टिंगली बिकॉज इफ देर इज नो डेड लाइन वॉट द आर्टिस्ट डज इज दैट he keeps perfecting the song and goes on and on that okay let's let's change this then it will, will sound better two months back uh, two months later he fi- he find some other flaw in the song and again changes something there are so many artists who are not professionals who make one song in one year because they are waiting for that one perfect song which is probably going to win them the grammy and if they have unlimited softwares they keep applying every software trying permutation combinations of every software and coming up with the best mix or best tones but it never happens people who have the most limitations make the most numbers of songs and because of that skill of executing a, fi- a song finally not just thinking of a melody that skill set in turn makes them able to make great songs the the limitless facilities of making a song does not make them a great musician these gunas work by mutual suppression ah uh-huh. the function of tamas is to veil consciousness of sattva to reveal it and of rajas the active principle to make either tamas suppress sattva or sattva suppress tamas these gunas are present in all particular existence as in the general cause or prakriti shakti evolution means the increased operation of sat- sattva guna thus the mineral world is more subject to tamas than the rest there is less tamas and more sattva in the vegetable world in the animal world sattva is increased and still more so in man who may rise through the cultivation of sattva guna to pure consciousness or moksh itself to use western parlance terminologies consciousness more and more appears as um, okay consciousness more and more appears as forms evolve and rise to man consciousness does not in itself change but its mental and material envelops do okay consciousness does not in itself change but its mental and material envelops they change thus releasing and giving consciousness more play as pure consciousness is spirit the release of it okay it with capital i the release of it of that consciousness of that or that spirit from the bonds of matter means that forms which issue from the power of spirit or shakti become more and more satvik a truly satvik man is therefore a spiritual man the aim of sadhana is therefore the cultivation of the sattva guna nature or prakriti is thus the veil of spirit as tamas guna the revealer of spirit as sattva guna and the activity rajas guna which makes either work so nature or prakriti is thus the veil of spirit as tamas guna prakriti is the revealer of spirit as uh, sattva guna and prakriti is activity as rajas guna which makes uh, either work thus the upward or revealing movement from the predominance of tamas to that of sattva represents the spiritual progress of the embodied spirit or jivatma it is the desire for the life of form which produces the universe this desire exists in the collective vasanas held like all else in incohate state in the mother power which passing from its own swarupa or formless state gives effect to them upon the expiration of the vast length of time which constitutes a day of brahma the whole universe is withdrawn into the great causal womb or yoni which produced it i am atma atma brahm uh, brahm you read explanation of this ma 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 vakya okay the limited selves are withdrawn into it and again when the creative throes are felt t h r o e s the creative throes are felt are put forth from it 
each appearing in that form and state which it previ- which its previous karma had made for it those who do good karma but with desire and self re- self regard or sakama go on death to heaven and thereafter reap their reward in good future birth on good future birth on earth because heaven is also a transitory state the bad are punished by evil births on earth and suffering in the hells which are also transitory those however who have rid themselves of all self regarding desire and work selflessly nishkama karma realize the brahman nature which is sachidananda such are liberated that is never appear again in the world of form which is the world of suffering and enter into the infinite ocean of bliss itself this is moksha or mukti or liberation as it is freedom from the universe of form it can only be attained through detachment from the world and desirelessness for those who desire the world of form cannot be freed from it life therefore is a field in which man who has gradually ascended through lower forms of minerals uh, mineral vegetable and animal life is given the opportunity of heaven life and liberation the universe has a moral purpose namely the affording to all existence of a field okay that this field will be afforded to all existence a field wherein it may reap the fruits of its action actions the form of life are therefore the stairs or sopana on which the man mounts to the state of infinite eternal and the formless bliss this then is the origin and the end of man he has made for himself his own past and present condition and will make this make his future one and will make his future one his essential nature is free if wise he, ad- he adopts the means or sadhana which lead to lasting happiness for that of the world is not to be had by all and even when attained is perishable and mixed with suffering this sadhana consists of various means and disciplines employed to produce purity of mind or chitta shuddhi and devotion to and worship of the magna mater of all meaning mother goddess it is with these means that the religious tantra shastras are mainly concerned the shakta tantra shastra contains a most elaborate and wonderful ritual partly its own partly of vedic origin to a ritualist it is of absorbing interest <coughs> bhartiya uh, sabhyata is asking a question of which answer i don't know okay let me check some comments again uh, vedas on entirety aren't written aren't even read by uh, mathadhipatis also many parts of the vedas are lost i see this is advaita version on based uh, on based on what you read also it takes a lot of preparation for doing one major yogya uh, in the range of days and months and it takes many such regular and continuous yugas etc in the oh. the hardest thing about the vedic karmakandas and doing it regularly is the lifestyle and like living in poverty eating once a day studying the vedas by hearing acha maintaining maintaining absolute control over your or just uh, i see ekam anekam bahushyam yes i said the word abrahamic once in a discussion and she thought abrahamism meant andy bram <laughs> abram they can't even process what i am saying because <laughs> it requires to break so much of false premises yes yes always always never target their uh, arguments their unka argument aayega jayega harp on their premises ghatiya premise ke upar pura ek pahad bana diya hai ghatiya argument ka premise ko todo pehle bar bar i am not sure what juice is exactly soma or where can we find it for havan Oh yes ashwamedh bull sacrifice and we need oh acha acha hmm. uh how do you remember how many tatvas in shaktism is it like 25 tatvas or advaita okay ritual is an art the art of religion ah uh-huh. art is the outward material expression of ideas intellectually held and emotionally felt i have to underline this this is one of the best sentences i have read in the last few days one other sentence is a fascinating sentence i read in dostoevsky's book uh, the brothers karamazov that man and uh, see any any good stimulating book you read you don't have to end up agreeing with everything right or you don't have to call a book good just because you find everything agreeing 
uh, everything to agree with that book okay you can agree with some things or everything in that book and still like the book in terms of how well it is written etc so uh, but with dostoevsky on this i agree very much he says that mankind is not really looking for god mankind does not give a shit about god at least most people mankind just wants three things miracles mystery and authority they they think they want god but what they are really seeking is these three things miracles mystery and authority whoever gives them miracles mystery and authority man will worship them and therefore you see even though communism never works they can't come out of this premise that communism is great or communism has uh, done some great things of course the miracles miracles never actually happen right communists have to come up with the idea that see this miraculous thing happened just like anyone who claims to have done a a truly miraculous thing will conjure up some story about it and it, it will be uh, b- b- pushed through a whisper campaign they they will they will m- make 50 guys stand in front of that guy who will uh, uh, w- w- with whom they have discussed something beforehand with those 50 guys and all 50 guys will say that yes yes that definitely happened that's how miracles are made to be believed uh and and are and are and new people are convinced to believe miracles but that's what man is looking for and that's that's one reason why uh, i i really have uh s- some disgust for uh, people who are always and always doing kamya puja and asking about kamya puja whether it's uh, people talking to rajesh nandi on social media rajesh rajesh nandi also saying about the these things that ha- so many people contact him for these things or uh, i i am in two or three uh, facebook groups about tantra and uh, p- purohits even every 99% of people are going on fucking asking that how will i get this job for wh- what puja do i need to do what what uh, god do i need to worship for a for a great partner i am having some problem Uh, what what do i need to do to solve this particular problem everyone wants some goddamn short term miraculous uh, problem solving for which they need religion or god or hinduism and if if marxists say that yes listen to us and we will give you these if christians come and tell them that just become christian and we will make this happen those dumb fuckers will immediately become marxists or christians so dostoevsky dostoevsky is 100% right no one no one cares about god most people don't care about god god is something much more of a beautiful concept people want miracles mystery and authority even shri krishna said that uh, uh, sakam puja is worst kind of bhakti oh nice so did buddha in dn 13 what what is dn here gautama and krishna agree i see wow okay <coughs> ritual art is concerned with the expression of those ideas and feelings which are specifically called religious it is a mode by which religious truth is presented and made intelligible in material forms and symbols to the mind it appeals to all natures passionately sensible of that beauty beauty with capital b in which to some god most manifests himself but it is more than this for it is the means by which the mind is transformed and purified ab 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 agar tumko ye nahi chahiye mind ka transformation aur purification tumko chahiye koi ladki ya acche marks tab tumhara kya kaam hai yahan pe in particular according to indian principles it is the instrument whereby the consciousness of the worshipper sadhaka is shaped in actual fact into forms of experience which embody the truths which scripture teaches the shakta is thus taught that he is one with shiva and his power of shakti this is not a matter of mere argument it is a matter of experience it is ritual and yoga practice which secured that experience for him how profound indian ritual is will be admitted by those who have understood the general principles of of all ritual and symbolism and have studied it in its indian form with a knowledge of the principles of which it is an expression those who speak of quote unquote mamadi or gibberish and superstition betray both their incapacity and ignorance 
the agamas are not themselves treatises on philosophy though they implied impliedly contain a particular theory of life they are what is called sadhana shastras that is practical scriptures prescribing the means by which happiness the quest of all mankind may be attained and as last lasting happiness is god they teach how man by worship and by practice of the disciplines prescribed may attain a divine experience from incidental statements and the practices described the philosophy is extracted if you are really looking for philosophy you can do that dighanikaya acha tipitak hmm the speaker of the tantras and the revealer of the shakta tantra is shiva himself or shive the devi herself now it is the first who teaches and the second who listens agama now again the latter assumes the role of guru and answers the questions of shiva in nigama for the two are one sometimes there are other inter- interlocutors thus one of the tantras is called uh, ishvara kartikeya samvada for there the lord addresses his son kartikeya i see like in my in my sri vigyan bhairav tantra in in sri vigyan bhairav tantra not my sri vigyan bhairav tantra it's basically a conversation between bhairava and bhairavi bhairavi is asking the questions whatever doubts she has and bhairava is answering the tantra shastra therefore claims to be a revelation and of the same essential truths as those contained in the eternal veda which is an authority to itself swata swata siddha those who have had experience of the truths recorded in shastra have also proclaimed the practical means whereby their experience was gained adopt those means they say and you will also have for yourself our experience this is the importance of sadhana and all sadhana shastras the guru says do as i tell you follow the method prescribed by scripture curb your desires attain a pure disposition and thus only and thus only will you obtain that certainty that experience which will render any questionings unnecessary the practical importance of the agama lies in its assumption of these principles and in the methods which it enjoins for the attainment of that state in which the truth is realized the following chapters shortly explain some of the main features of both the philosophy and practice of the shakta division of the agama for their full development many volumes are necessary what is here said is a mere sketch in a popular form of a vast subject i will conclude this chapter with extracts from a bengali letter written to me shortly before his death guys where are the bengali pride guys this is this is this is where you you have truly re- true reasons for being a proud bengali i will conclude this chapter with extracts from a bengali letter written to me shortly before his death now many years ago by pandit pandit shiva pandit shiva chandra Vi- vidyarnava the shakta author of the tantra tatva which i have published published under the title principles of tantra okay so basically this person is Arthur Avalon's guru okay he is the one who initiated him as far as i remember principles of tantra is a two volume book which even rajeshri nandi says is the if you are looking at uh, if you are trying to get into tantra from a scholarly perspective not a practitioner's perspective then that book is the best for you and i i was wondering ever since i heard rajeshri nandi say say this in beer by self that uh, uh book padhne se nahi hoga there is a difference between a scholarly perspective and a practitioner's perspective i was not entirely getting it that i am approaching every all these scriptures as a scholarly perspective right uh, then what 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 is the really the difference between the uh, between approaching it as a scholar and versus approaching it as a practitioner maybe okay i'm not doing the every puja that's recommended every ritualistic practice that's recommended but how does that differentiate me from the practitioner in terms of the knowledge or why is my knowledge less or different not maybe not lesser or more then i remembered that's the same with music okay there are scholars of music like sir roger scruton even he has written so many books on music but he is not a musician he can't play an instrument maybe he can play piano he has never composed a song in his life then i remembered yeah there are so many people who who take the scholarly approach to music but i am the practitioner in music so very very interesting that uh, almost everything that rajesh nandi says about tantra seems to be applicable for art in general and even specifically music it's basically comprehending the transcendental <coughs> okay uh, so now the letter okay i will conclude this chapter with extracts from a bengali letter written to me shortly before his death now many years ago by pandit shiva chandra vidyarnava the shakta author of the tantra tatva 
which I have publi published under the title Principles of Tantra. The words in bracket are my own. Quote, the letter is starting. At the present time, the general public are ignorant of the principles of the Tantra Shastra. The cause of this ignorance is the fact that the Tantra Shastra is a Sadhana Shastra, the greater part of which becomes intelligible only by Sadhana. For this reason, the Shastra and its teachers prohibit their general promulgation. Yeah. So long as the Shastra was learned from Gurus only, this golden rule was of immense good. In course of time, the old Sadhana has become almost extinct. And along with it, the knowledge of the deep and mighty principles of the Shastra is almost lost. Nevertheless, some faint shadowings of these principles which can be thoroughly known by Sadhana only have been put before the public partly with the view to preserve Shastric knowledge from destruction and partly for commercial reasons. When I commenced to write Tantra Tattva some 25 years ago, Bengali society was in a perilous state owing to the influx of other religions, lack of faith and a spirit of disputation. Spirit of disputation meaning that everything was being disputed for, for no apparent reason. That uh, wo, like, like, uh, commie uh, people do that. Today I'll break, break some stereotype or the other. Shortly before this, uh, a number of English books had appeared on the Tantra Shastra which, whilst ignorant of Dharma, Sadhana and Siddhi, contained some hideous and outrageous pictures drawn by the Bengali historians and novelists ignorant of and unfaithful to Shastric, pr Shastric uh, principles. The English books by English writers contained merely a reflection of what English educated Bengalis of those days had written. Both are even today equally ignorant of the Tantra Shastra. For this re reason, in writing Tantra Tattva, I could not go deeply into the subject as my heart wished. I had to spend my time in removing thorns, objections and, and, and charges from the path by reasoning and argument. I could not therefore deal in my book with most of the subjects which, when I brought out the first volume, I promised to discuss. The Tantra Shastra is broadly divided into three parts, namely Sadhana, Siddhi, that which is gained by Sadhana, and Philosophy, Darshana. Unlike other systems, it is not narrow nor does it generate doubt by setting forth conflicting views. For its speaker is one, and not many, and he is omniscient, the speaker. The philosophy is however scattered through the tantric treatises and is dealt with as occasion arises in connection with sadhana and siddhi. Could, uh, as I had suggested to him, uh, meaning Arthur Avalon is talking about his guru, as I suggested to him that could such parts be collected and arranged according to the principles of the subject matter, they would turn, they would form a vast system of philosophy, wonderful, divine, lasting, true and carrying conviction to men. As a philosophy, it is at the head of all others. You have prayed to Parameshwara uh, for my long life and my desire to carry out my project. Okay, so this you is the author we are reading, okay? Because this is the letter from the Guru to, to Arthur Avalon. So you have prayed to Parameshwara for my long life and my desire to carry out my project makes me also pray for it. But the state of my body makes me doubt whether the prayer will be granted. By the grace, therefore, of the mother, the sooner the work is done, the better. You say that those who worship Parameshwara, he makes of one family. Let therefore all distinctions be put aside, for all sadhakas are as such one. This noble principle is the final word of all shastras, all communities, and all religions. All distinctions wi uh, which arise from differences in the physical body are distinctions for the human world only. They have no place in the world of worship of Parameshwara. The more therefore that uh, the more therefore that we shall approach him, him with capital H, the more with will the differences between you and me vanish. Aha. Uh -huh. It is because both of us pray for the removal of all such differences that I am led to rely on your encouragement and help and am bold to take up on your encouragement and help and am bold to take up this difficult and daring work. If by your grace the gate gate of this tantric philosophy is opened in the third part of Tantra Tattva, I dare to say that the learned in all countries will gaze and be astonished for it is pure truth and for this reason I shall be able to place it before them with perfect clearness. And that third part never came out. Okay, this is where the quote ends. So basically the letter has ended here. Unfortunately, this project of a third part of the Tantra Tattva could not be carried out. Yeah owing to the lamented death of its author. 
which followed not long after the receipt of this letter naturally like all believers throughout the world to throughout the whole world he claimed for his scripture the possession in all its details of what was true or good whilst others may not concede this i think that those with knowledge and understanding and free from prejudice will allow that it contains a profoundly conceived doctrine wonderfully worked out in practice some of its ideas and principles are shared though it be under other names and forms by all religions by all religious men and other and others either by all or some indian communities who are not shaktas leaving therefore for the moment aside what may be said to be peculiar to itself it cannot be that wholly absurd repulsive and infamous system of quote and quote last mummery and magic as brian hodgson called uh, called it which it has been said to be an impartial criticism may be summed up in few words that together with what has value it contains some practices which are not generally approved and which have led to abuse as to these the reader is referred to the chapter on the panchatatva or secret ritual i conclude with a translation of an article in bengali by a well known writer p bandopadhyay who, who is this p bandopadhyay p banerji in the sahitya shravan 13 sahitya magazine shravan shravana month 1320 bengal year 1320 uh, calcutta july august uh, that's the english year 1913 it was evoked by the publication of arthur avalon meaning the author we are whose book we are reading it was evoked by the publication of arthur avalon's translation of and introduction to the mahanirvana tantra it is an interesting statement as regards the uh, shakta tantra and bengali views thereon omitting here some commentary uh, commendatory statements touching arthur avalon's work and the writer's thanks a hundred times quote and quote thanks a hundred times for the english version the article continues as follows quote At one time the Mahanirvana Tantra had some popularity in Bengal. It was printed and published under the editorship of Pandit Anandachandra Vedanta Va- Vedanta Vagisha and issued from the Adi Brahmo Samaj Press. Raja Ramohan Roy himself was a follower of the tantras, married after the Shaiva form and used to practice the tantric worship. What what did we just read? Holy cow. And then that guy stood up and said that संस्कृत पढ़ के क्या होगा चलो हम मृत्यु के बाद क्रिश्चियन बेडियल में जाते हैं इंग्लैंड में दिस इज इनसे आई हैव टू मार्क दिस राजा राम मोहन रॉय हिमसेल्फ वॉज अ फॉलोअर ऑफ द तंत्र मैरिड आफ्टर द शैवा फॉर्म एंड यूज टू प्रैक्टिस द तांत्रिक वर्शिप वेट इन माई कैमरा शेख हि स्पिरिचुअल प्रिसेप्टर Swami uh, Hari Harananda was well known to be a saint who had attained to perfection Siddha Purusha okay Raja Ramohan Roy is guru basically he endeavored to establish the Mahanirvana Tantra as the scripture of the Brahmo Samaj the formula and the forms of the Brahmo church are are borrowed from the initiation in Brahman worship Brahma Diksha in this tantra the later Brahmo somewhat losing themselves in their spirit of imitation of Christian rituals were led to abandon the path shown to them by raja ram mohan and the p- path for that was set by raja ram mohan's own policies on sanskrit that was bound to happen so this is why people who bengalis who do support raja ram mohan roy have such a fight with people like abhijit chavra and all even sanjeev sanyal aurobindo institute people they all love raja ram mohan roy so this is a, this is a fun aspect that we uh, just got to know about raja ram mohan roy this is pretty fascinating so so you see bhartiya uh, sabhyata this happened uh, <laughs> later on he probably changed his mind what a weird world man you can't judge any person based on one one aspect of their life thoughts evolve <laughs> but he, yet even now many among them re- okay now they are talking about uh, brahmo samaj again so the the later brahmo somewhat losing their selves in their spirit of imitation of christian rituals were led to abandon the path shown to them by raja ram mohan but yet even now many among them recite the hymn to the brahman which occurs in the mahanirvana tantra in the first era of the excessive dissemination of english english culture and training bengal resounded with opprobrious criticisms of the tantras and that is the fault of raja ram mohan roy himself so maybe he did not he did not understand that what sword he was unleashing no one among the educated in bengal could praise them even those who called themselves hindus were unable outwardly to support the tantric doctrines 
but even then there were very great tantric sadhakas and men learned in the tantras with whose help the principles of tantras might have been explained to the public but the educated bengali of the age was bewitched by the christian culture and no one cared to inquire what did or did not exist in their paternal heritage the more especially that any who attempted to study the tantras ran the risk of exposing themselves to uh, contumely f- uh, from the ex- exposing themselves to contumely from the quote unquote educated community maharaja sri sir jyotindra mohan tagore of sacred name alone published two or three works with the help of the venerable pandit jagan mohan tarkalankara tarkalankara the the haratatva didhiti didhiti associated with the name of his father is even now acknowledged to be a marvelously glorious production of the genius of the pandits of bengal the venerable vriddha pandit jagan mohan also published a commentary on the mahanirvana tantra even at that epoch that era such study of the tantras was confined to a certain section of the educated in bengal maharaja sir jatindra mohan alone endeavored to understand and appreciate men like bama khapa Uh, of whom uh, rather rajeshinandi has also spoken of every bengali has uh, heard of him non bengalis uh, google the name okay vama or uh, bama khapa then the naked father nangta baba of 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 kadda i don't know what place is this k d d a kadda kada uh, it's probably named something else today and F- swami sadananda the educated community of bengal had only neglect and contempt for sadhakas like Uh, Bishay Pagla, the mad uh, Bishay, and Binu, the Chandala woman. Bengal is even now governed by the Tantra. Even now, the Hindus of Bengal receive Tantric initiation. But the glory and the honor which the Tantra had and received in the time of Maharaja's Maharaja's Krishna Chandra and Shiva Chandra no longer exist. This is the reason why the Tantric sadhakas of Bengal are not so well known at present. It seems as if the World Mother has again willed it, has again desired to manifest her power. so that arthur avalon is studying the tantras and has published so beautiful a version of the mahanirvana the english educated bengali will now we may hope turn his attention to the tantra it did not happen at least people like rajeshinandi did turn to it but now with rajeshinandi again we have another chance <sighs> okay uh, another quote begins the special virtue of the tantra lies in its mode of sadhana it is neither mere worship or upasana nor prayer it is not lamenting or contrition or repentance before the deity that I, oh uh, see my i screwed this up etc it is the sadhana which is the union of purusha and prakriti the sadhana which joins the male principle and the mother element within the body and strives to make attributed attributeless okay listen to this sentence the sadhana which joins the male principle and the mother element within the body and strives to make the attributed attribute less that which is in me and that for which i am this consciousness is ever present in me is spread like butter in milk is spread like butter in milk throughout the created world of moving and unmoving things though the uh, through the gross and subtle okay uh, gross is gross ka sanskrit kya hai sukshma is subtle gross is what i forgot uh, someone someone uh, correct me in the comment section sukshma sharir and and uh, karan gross is probably karan here right no that's the that's the uh, karan is not gross i forgot you all let me know in the comment section so through the gross and the subtle the conscious and unconscious through all it is the object of tantric sadhana to merge that self principle or swarat into the universal virat swarat and virat This sadhana is to be performed through the awakening of the forces within the body. A man is siddha in this sadhana when he is able to awaken kundalini and pierce the six chakras. This is not mere philosophy, a mere attempt to ponder upon husks of words, but something which is to be done in a thoroughly practical manner. The tantras say, quote, "Begin practicing under the guidance of guru. If you do not obtain favorable results immediately, you can freely give it up." that's the beauty of hinduism always that you don't want to convert you don't want to practice this don't i don't give a shit if you do practice this you'll have to practice practice it exactly how we tell you otherwise you won't feel anything no other religion dares to give so bold a challenge yes we believe that the sadhana of the muslims and the 
esoteric religion or secret sadhana and rituals of the Christians of the Roman Catholic and Greek churches is based on this groundwork of the tantras. Wherever there is sadhana, we believe that there is the system of tantra. While treating of the tantras sometime back in the Sahitya, I hinted at this conclusion and I cannot say that the author Arthur Avalon has not noticed it too. For he has expressed his surprise at the similarity which exists between the Roman Catholic and the Tantric mode of sadhana. There is another reason for that. The Roman Catholics also learned a lot of things from the Celtic Druids. And Druids, according to me, are people who were kicked out from India. The Tantra has made the yoga system of Patanjali easily practicable and has combined with it the Tantric rituals and the ceremonial observances or Karmakanda. That is the reason why the Tantric system of sadhana has been adopted by all the religious sects of India. If this theory of the uh, antiquarians that the Tantra was brought into India from Chaldea or Shakadvipa be correct, then it may also be inferred that the Tantra passed from Chaldea to Europe. The Tantra is to be found in all the strata of Buddhism. The Tantric sadhana is manifest in Confucianism and Shintoism is but under the name of the Tantric cult. Many historians acknowledge that the worship of Shakti or Tantric sadhana which was prevalent in Egypt from ancient times spread to Phoenicia and Greece. Consequently, we may suppose that the influence of the Tantra was felt in primitive Christianity of because of Druids as well. Sthula, yes, yes, yes. Sthula and uh, Sukshma. Hmm. That's what I was thinking. I, I, was, th I was confusing it with Sthanu. <coughs> okay. The Tantra contains nothing like idolatry or worship of the doll, quote unquote, which we, taking the cue from the Christian missionaries nowadays, call it. This truth the author Arthur Avalon has made very clear in the introduction to his translation. The Tantra repeatedly says that one is to adore the deity by becoming a deity. One is to adore the deity by becoming a deity or devta himself. The Ishta Devata is the very self of Atman and not separate from it. He is the receptacle of all, yet he is not contained in anything, for he is the great witness, the eternal Purusha. The true Tantric worship is the worship in and by the mind. Okay, The true Tantric worship is the worship in and by the mind. The less subtle form of Tantric worship is that of the Yantra. And uh, the, the uh, Lady Sanyasi who has uh, translated the uh, Sri Vigyan Bhairav Tantra which I am reading. She actually uh, has done commentary as well after the translated parts also, right? So she makes it very clear that yes, you, you cannot practice what your end goal is on the very first day, okay? Your, your, if you are starting to uh, play cricket, your end goal is to hit a century at, at Eden Gardens maybe. But that doesn't mean that uh, very first day you are holding a bat, Eden Gardens authorities let you enter a cricket match in the middle of a match with against Australia so that we wait for you to hit a century. No. For a beginner, you will need some yantra or idols in front of your face. But maybe one day uh, you will not need require it. And even Bhairava is clear on it. Bhairava makes fun of it. That uh, this, uh, what's this uh, Sakara worship and all. Uh, uh, that That's for... Less intelligent people, something like that. Paraphrasing, obviously. But the additional commentaries made by the uh, Sanyasi translator that, no, for beginners, that is the case. F the end goal is that you don't require it someday. The true tantric worship is the worship in and by the mind. The less subtle form of, that of tantric worship is that of the yantra. Form is born of the yantra. The form is made manifest by japa and awakened by mantra shakti. Tens of millions of beautiful forms of the mother bloom forth in the heavens of the heart of the Siddha Purusha. Devotees or aspirants of a lower order of competency, Nimna Adhikari, under the directions of the Guru, adore the great Maya by making manifest to themselves one of her various forms which can be only seen by Dhyana or meditation. That is not mere worship of the idol. If it were so, the image would not be thrown into the water. No one in that case would be so irreverent as to sink the earthen image of the goddess in the water. Okay, Visarjan. The primordial Shakti is to be awakened by Bhava, by Dhyana, by Japa and by the piercing of the six chakras. She is all will. Okay, will with capital W. Ichha. She is all Ichha. 
No one can say when and how she shows herself and to what sadhaka. We only know that she is, and there, and there are, and there are her names and forms. Her with capital H. Wonderfully transcending is her form, far beyond the reach of word or thought. This has made the Bengali bhakta sing this plain, plaintive song. Hard in quote, hard indeed is it to approach the sea of forms and to bathe in it, and ah me, this my coming is perhaps in vain. This is probably a song by Ramkrishna Paramahansa maybe. The tantra deals with another special subject, mantra shakti. It is no exaggeration t- exaggeration to say that we have never heard even from any Bengali pandit such a clear exposition of mantra shakti as that which the author Arthur Avalon has given in his introduction to the Mahanirvana Tantra. I forgot to mention that, yeah, this is one of the reasons that I am reading uh, this book, which is a study or a scholarly approach to uh, uh, Tantra and, and Shaktiism, uh, but not a primary source, which is that this is an outsider's perspective on this topic. So his analysis will be more coherent, like a, uh, like easier for a beginner to understand. Because I am also an outsider to everything, right? I was ra- raised in a completely atheist household i n- never had a puja place in my house up till today uh, even today we don't have so uh, i uh, these these uh, sorts of people their writings are more relevant to me but all we have to uh, be careful is that who is writing with what in- intention and arthur avalon's intentions are pretty clear we had thought that mantra shakti was a thing to be felt and not to be explained to others but the author with the force of his genius has in his simple exposition given us such explanation of it as is possible in the English language. The Tantras say that the soul in the body is the very self of the letters of the Dhvani. The mother, the embodiment of the 50 letters or Varna, is present in the various letters in the different chakras. Like the melody which issues when the chords of a lute or lute lute are struck, the mother who moves in the six chakras and who is the very self of the letters, self of the letters, okay, awakens with a burst of harmony when the chords of the letters or varnas are struck in their order and siddhi becomes as easy of attainment to the sadhaka as the amalaka fruit in one's hand when she is roused. That is why the great sadhaka Rama Prashad, uh, okay, Rama Prashad uh, awakened the mother by the invocation Arise O Mother uh, Jagri Janani. That is the reason why the bhakta sang How long will thou sleep in the Muladhara O Mother uh, Kula Kundalini Ram Prashad this, so this is Ram Prashad Sen song right yeah Ram Prashad Sen is a famous uh, 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 composer of mainly uh, Makali's uh, b- b- Bhakti songs the Bodhana or awakening ceremony in the Durga Puja is nothing but the awakening of the Shakti of the Mother, the mere rousing of the consciousness of the Kundalini. This awakening is performed by Mantra Shakti. The Mantra is nothing but the harmonious sound of the lute of the body. When the symphony is perfect, she who embodies the worlds, or Jaganmai, rouses herself. When she is awake, it does not take long before the union of Shiva and Shakti takes place. Do Japa once. Do Japa according to the to rule uh, looking up to the Guru. And the effects of japa of which we hear in the tantra will prove to be true at every step. Then you will understand that the tantra is not mere trickery or a false weaving out of words. What is wanted is the guru, good guru. What is wanted is the wanted is the good guru, mantra capable of granting siddhi and application, and sa- that is sadhana. Arthur Avalon has grasped the meaning of the principles of mantra, which are so difficult to understand. We may certainly say that. He could only make this impossible thing possible through inherent tendencies or samskara acquired in the previous life. The Tantra accepts the, accepts the doctrine of rebirth. It does not, however, acknowledge it as a mere matter of argument or reasoning, but like a geographical map, it makes clear the unending chain of existences of the sadhaka. The Tantra has two divisions, the dharma of society, samaja, and the dharma of spiritual culture, sadhana. According to the regulation of the Samaja Dharma, it acknowledges birth and caste. But in Sadhana Dharma, there is no caste distinction, no Brahmana or Shudra, no man or woman. Distinction between high and low follows success in Sadhana and Siddhi. We only find the question of fitness or worthiness, Adhikara Tattva, in the Tantra. 
this fitness or adhikara is discovered with reference to the samskaras of past existences that is why the chandala purna pura purnananda is a brahmana oh dear god see this let me mark this the cast question has been uh, addressed here so therefore the chandala purnananda is a brahmana and kripa siddha the sadhaka is equal to sarvananda that is why ram uh, ram prasad ram prasad stain of the vaidya caste is fit to be honored even by brahmanas the tantra is to be studied with the aid of the teachings of the guru for its language is extraordinary and its exposition impossible with a mere grammatical knowledge of roots and inflections the tantra is only a system of shakti sadhana there are rules in it whereby we may draw shakti from all created things there is nothing to be accepted or rejected in it whatever is helpful for sadhana is acceptable this sadhana is decided according to the fitness of the particular person uh, adhikarya adhikarya anusare oh, yeah it's a bengali word basically adhikarya anusare adhikarya adhikarya anusare he must follow that for which he is fit or worthy okay he must follow that for which he is fit or worthy shakti pervades all and embraces all beings and all things the inanimate and the moving beasts and birds men and women the unfolding of the power or shakti enclosed within the body of the animal or jiva as well as the man is brought about only with the help of the tendencies within the body the mode of sadhana is ascertained with regard to these tendencies the very meaning of sadhana is unfolding rousing up or awakening of power shakti thus the shakta obtains power from all actions in the world the sadhana of the tantra is not to be measured by the little measuring yard of the well being or ill being of your community or mine okay this is a great line the sadhana of the tantra cannot be measured by the little measuring yard of that uh, so called that uh, well being or ill or or uh, good health or bad health of your community or my community so now a quote is given from a song i guess from ramprasad sen let you let you understand and i understand oh my mind whether anyone else understand it or not adhikari anushari yes the author arthur avalon is fully conscious of this in spite of it he has tried to explain almost all points making them easy to comprehend for the intellect of materialistic civilized society of today for this attempt on his part we are grateful to him the tantra has no notion of some separate far seeing god it preaches no such doctrine in it as that god the creator rules the universe from heaven in the eye of the tantra the body of the sadhaka is the universe the autocratos or atma shakti within the body is the de- is the desired ishta and the quote unquote to sought before the sadhya deity or devta of the sadhaka okay listen to this sentence once more in tantra the body of the sadhaka is the universe the atma shakti within the body is the desired ishta and the to sought before the the sadhya the, the thing that is sought, that is supposed to be sought is the deity or devta of the sadhaka the unfolding of this self power is to be brought about by self realization or atma darshana which is to be achieved through sadhana whoever realizes his self attains to liberation mukti the author arthur avalon has treated of these matters siddhanta in his work the tantra tatva the principles of tantra volume 1 and volume 2 many of the topics dealt with in the mahanirvana t- uh, t- tantra will not be fully understood without a thorough per- perusal of the book the principles of the tantra must be lectured on to the bengali of fresh ye fir se karwana karna padega pura scratch se if the mahanirvana tantra as translated by arthur avalon is spread abroad if the bengali is once more desirous to hear desirous to hear that attempt might well be undertaken our land of bengal used to be ruled by tantric works such as the uh, sarada tilaka shakta uh, shakta nanda tarangini uh, pranatoshini tantra sara etc then the mahanirvana tantra did not have so great an, great an influence it seems to us that considering the form into which as a result of english education and culture the mind of the bengali has been shaped the the mahanirvana is a proper tantra for the time Raja Rammohan Roy endeavored to encourage regard for the Mahanirvana Tantra because he misun- he understood this again i have to mark this
this will be required when in debates or when we are talking about Radha Ramon Rai again. So, Raja Ram Mohan Roy endeavored to encourage, regard, encourage, okay? He said that please regard the Maha Nirvana Tantra, Tantra, have respect for the Maha Nirvana Tantra because he understood this. If the English translation of the Maha Nirvana Tantra by Arthur Avalon is well received by the thoughtful public in Bengal, the study of the original Sanskrit work may gradually come into vogue. They were, they were wishing for these things in 1918. It's happening in 2023. They had to wait 110 years. This much hope we may entertain. In fact, the English educated Bengali community is without religion or dharma or action, karma, and is devoid of the sense of nationality, jatiya dharma, and caste. The, Mahanir, the Mahanirvana tat, uh, Tantra alone is fit for the country and the race at the present time. We believe that probably because such an impossibility is going to be possible, a cultured, influential, rich Englishman like Arthur Avalon, honored of the rulers, has translated and published the Mahanirvana Tantra. When his Tantra Tattva is published, we shall be able to speak out much more. For the present, we ask the educated people of Bengal to read his read this most unprecedented Mahanirvana Tantra. Arthur Avalon has not spoken a single word to satisfy himself, nor tried to explain things according to his own, own imagination. He has only given what are true inferences according to the principles of Shastric reasoning. An auspicious opportunity for the English-knowing public to understand the Tantra has arrived. It is the counsel of the Tantra itself that if you desire to renounce anything, renounce it only after a thorough acquaintance with it. If you desire to embrace anything new, accept it only after a searching inquiry. What a great line. What a great line, guys. This is the answer for all commies who are breaking stereotypes. It is, a, it is the advice of Tantra itself that if you desire to renounce anything, renounce it only after a thorough acquaintance with it. Samjho pehle, fir chodna hai to chodo. If you desire to embrace anything new, accept it only after a searching enquiry. The Tantra embodies the old religion or dharma of Bengal. Even if it is to be cast away for good, agar chodna bhi hai, even then, it ought only to be done after it has been fully known. Otherwise you are being fucking unfair. What a... I feel sad for who, who wrote this. He was early just by 110 years. So, see again, he is not saying that you have to believe in Tantra. He is saying, if you don't want to believe it, don't believe it. But understand it. Steel man the argument of the Tantra text itself. Read it, understand it, uh, understand its arguments, understand what it's trying to say. Then if you don't like it, reject it. It's fair enough. But don't don't uh, listen to four quotes from uh, all these countless texts and form your opinion based on those four quotes. The Tantra embodies the old religion of Bengal, even if it is to be cast away for good. That ought only to be done after it has been fully known. I forgot to underline this, sorry. Wait. In the present case, a thoughtful and educated Englishman of high position has taken it upon himself to give us a full introduction to the Tantra. We can frankly say that in this introduction, he has not tried a lot, uh, he has not tried a jot to shirk or to gloss over the conclusions of the Shastra with the vanity of explanation born of his imagination. He has endeavored to bring before the mind of his readers whatever actually is in the Tantra, be it regarded as either good or evil. Will not the Bengali receive with welcome such a full offering, Argya, made by a Bhakta from a foreign land? This is where this chapter ends. This was a pretty big chapter. Second chapter, of course, we will do the next day. Not tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, if I do come online, we are uh, we will do, uh, I think, History of Indian Philosophy. Yeah, I'm planning to do all those rip, uh, on, on with permutations and combinations, different days, different texts. The next chapter is called Shakti, the World as Power. <sighs> okay, let me check some comments and have some coffee now. This was a great chapter. Let me check some comments. Adhikari Anusare. Bro, how heavy is that mudgal? And how much? Please pick it up once. Uh, it's just 2 kgs. And uh, any 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 person who who is a gym bro, 
<laughs> laughs at me when I say that it's just two kgs, but actually the specific workouts that you are supposed to do for that, at least on a beginner level. By beginner level, I don't mean who's working out for the first time. By beginner level, I mean uh, someone who is starting with Mudgar. For them, two kgs is pretty, pretty, pretty good enough. It costs five hundred rupees. Bharatiya uh, Sabhya, what is her name? What do you want to uh, say to those woke girls who thinks they are Durga because <laughs> she is woman? Oh my God! Yeah. वही वही बोलो राजर्षि नंदी का जो लाइन है चार लाइन गीता का पढ़ लिया तो उससे नहीं होगा देर इज नो नो शक्ति वर्शिप और दुर्गा विदाउट शिवा डू मेन दिस दे थिंक दे आर शिवा और आर दे जस्ट भक्त दे हैव ब्रह्म ज्ञान नो सो शर्द आई थिंक इट इज भक्त I found a line in Narayana Stuti Striya samasta sakala jagastu You are all women of the world If every woman is Durga Every man is Shiva of course hmm. That's because of Prakriti and Purush Tattva yeah. That of Narayana Stuti It was an interesting Adhyaya Yes Okay then Good night guys This was a great live stream Thanks for joining We had great fun talking On our various different kinds of topics See you soon Good night <laughs>